The message of Jeremiah son of Hilkiah of the family of priests who lived in Anathoth in the country of Benjamin. God's message began to come to him during the thirteenth year that Josiah son of Ammon reigned over Judah. It continued to come to him during the time Jehoiakim son of Josiah reigned over Judah. And it continued to come to him clear down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of the reign of Zedekiah son of Josiah over Judah, the year that Jerusalem was taken into exile. This is what God said. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations. That's what I had in mind for you. But I said, hold it, Master God. Look at me. I don't know anything. I'm only a boy. God told me, don't say, I'm only a boy. I'll tell you where to go and you'll go there. I'll tell you what to say and you'll say it. Don't be afraid of a soul. I'll be right there, looking after you. God's decree. God reached out, touched my mouth, and said. Look. I've just put my words in your mouth, hand delivered. See what I've done. I've given you a job to do. Among nations and governments, a red letter day. Your job is to pull up and tear down. Take apart and demolish. And then start over. Building and planting. God's message came to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I said, A walking stick, that's all. And God said, Good eyes. I'm sticking with you. I'll make every word I give you come true. God's message came again, so what do you see now? I said, I see a boiling pot, tipped down toward us. Then God told me, disaster will pour out of the north. On everyone living in this land. Watch for this, I'm calling all the kings out of the north. God's decree. They'll come and set up headquarters. Facing Jerusalem's gates. Facing all the city walls. Facing all the villages of Judah. I'll pronounce my judgment on the people of Judah. For walking out on me, what a terrible thing to do. And courting other gods with their offerings. Worshipping as gods sticks they'd carved, stones they'd painted. But you, up on your feet and get dressed for work. Stand up and say your piece. Say exactly what I tell you to say. Don't pull your punches. Or I'll pull you out of the lineup. Stand at attention while I prepare you for your work. I'm making you as impregnable as a castle. Immovable as a steel post. Solid as a concrete block wall. You're a one-man defense system. Against this culture. Against Judah's kings and princes. Against the priests and local leaders. They'll fight you, but they won't. Even scratch you. I'll back you up every inch of the way. God's decree. God's message came to me. It went like this, get out in the streets and call to Jerusalem. God's message. I remember your youthful loyalty. Our love as newlyweds. You stayed with me through the wilderness years. Stuck with me through all the hard places. Israel was God's holy choice. The pick of the crop. Anyone who laid a hand on her would soon wish he hadn't. God's decree. Hear God's message, house of Jacob. Yes, you, house of Israel. God's message, what did your ancestors find fault within me? That they drifted so far from me. 
took up with Sir Windbag, and turned into windbags themselves. It never occurred to them to say, where's God? The God who got us out of Egypt, who took care of us through thick and thin, those rough and tumble. Wilderness years of parched deserts and death valleys. A land that no one who enters comes out of. A cruel, inhospitable land. I brought you to a garden land. Where you could eat lush fruit. But you barged in and polluted my land. Trashed and defiled my dear land. The priests never thought to ask, where's God? The religion experts knew nothing of me. The rulers defied me. The prophets preached God ball. And chased empty God dreams and silly God schemes. Because of all this, I'm bringing charges against you. God's decree. Charging you and your children and your grandchildren. Look around. Have you ever seen anything quite like this? Sail to the Western Islands and look. Travel to the Kedar Wilderness and look. Look closely. Has this ever happened before? That a nation has traded in its gods. For gods that aren't even close to gods. But my people have traded my glory. For empty god dreams and silly god schemes. Stand in shock heavens, at what you see. Throw up your hands in disbelief, this can't be. God's decree. My people have committed a compound sin. They've walked out on me, the fountain. Of fresh flowing waters, and then dug cisterns. Cisterns that leak, cisterns that are no better than sieves. Isn't Israel a valued servant? Born into a family with place and position. So how did she end up a piece of meat? Fought over by snarling and roaring lions. There's nothing left of her but a few old bones. Her towns trashed and deserted. Egyptians from the cities of Memphis and Topans. Have broken your skulls. And why do you think all this has happened? Isn't it because you walked out on your God? Just as he was beginning to lead you in the right way. And now, what do you think you'll get by going off to Egypt? Maybe a cool drink of Nile River water. Or what do you think you'll get by going off to Assyria? Maybe a long drink of Euphrates River water. Your evil ways will get you a sound thrashing, that's what you'll get. You'll pay dearly for your disloyal ways. Take a long, hard look at what you've done and its bitter results. Was it worth it to have walked out on your God? God's decree, Master God of the Angel Armies. A long time ago you broke out of the harness. You shook off all restraints. You said, I will not serve. And off you went. Visiting every sex and religion shrine on the way. Like a common whore. You were a select vine when I planted you. From completely reliable stock. And look how you've turned out. A tangle of rancid growth, a poor excuse for a vine. Scrub, using the strongest soaps. Scour your skin raw. The sin grease won't come out. I can't stand to even look at you. God's decree, the Master's decree. How dare you tell me, I'm not stained by sin. I've never chased after the ball sex gods. Well, look at the tracks you've left behind in the valley. How do you account for what is written in the desert dust? Tracks of a camel in heat, running this way and that. Tracks of a wild donkey in rut. Sniffing the wind for the slightest scent of sex. Who could possibly corral her? On the hunt for sex, sex, and more sex. 
insatiable, indiscriminate, promiscuous. Slow down. Take a deep breath. What's the hurry? Why wear yourself out? Just what are you after anyway? But you say, I can't help it. I'm addicted to alien gods. I can't quit. Just as a thief is chagrined, but only when caught. So the people of Israel are chagrined. Caught along with their kings and princes. Their priests and prophets. They walk up to a tree and say, My father. They pick up a stone and say, My mother. You bore me. All I ever see of them is their backsides. They never look me in the face. But when things go badly, they don't hesitate to come running. Calling out, get a move on. Save us. Why not go to your handcrafted gods you're so fond of? Rouse them. Let them save you from your bad times. You've got more gods, Judah. Then you know what to do with. What do you have against me? Running off to assert your independence. God's decree. I've wasted my time trying to train your children. They've paid no attention to me, ignored my discipline. And you've gotten rid of your God messengers. Treating them like dirt and sweeping them away. What a generation you turned out to be. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I warn you? Have I let you down, Israel? Am I nothing but a dead-end street? Why do my people say, good riddance? From now on we're on our own. Young women don't forget their jewelry, do they? Brides don't show up without their veils, do they? But my people forget me. Day after day after day they never give me a thought. What an impressive start you made. To get the most out of life. You founded schools of sin. Taught graduate courses in evil. And now you're sending out graduates, resplendent in cap and gown. Except the gowns are stained with the blood of your victims. All that blood convicts you. You cut and hurt a lot of people to get where you are. And yet you have the nerve to say, I've done nothing wrong. God doesn't mind. He hasn't punished me, has he? Don't look now, but judgment's on the way. Aimed at you who say, I've done nothing wrong. You think it's just a small thing, don't you? To try out another sin project and the first one fails. But Egypt will leave you in the lurch. The same way that Assyria did. You're going to walk away from there. Wringing your hands. I, God, have blacklisted those you trusted. You'll get not a lick of help from them. God's message came to me as follows if a man's wife walks out on him and marries another man. Can he take her back as if nothing had happened? Wouldn't that raise a huge stink in the land? And isn't that what you've done? Hoard your way with God after God. And now you want to come back as if nothing had happened. God's decree. Look around at the hills. Where have you not had sex? You've camped out like hunters stalking deer. You've solicited many lover gods. Like a streetwalking whore. Chasing after other gods. And so the rain has stopped. No more rain from the skies. But it doesn't even phase you. Brazen as whores. You carry on as if you've done nothing wrong. Then you have the nerve to call out, my father. You took care of me when I was a child. Why not now? Are you going to keep up your anger non-stop? That's your line. 
Meanwhile you keep sinning non-stop. God spoke to me during the reign of King Josiah, you have noticed, haven't you, how fickle Israel has visited every hill and grove of trees as a whore at large. I assumed that after she had gotten it out of her system, she'd come back, but she didn't. Her flighty sister, Judah, saw what she did. She also saw that because of fickle Israel's loose morals I threw her out, gave her her walking papers. But that didn't faze flighty sister Judah. She went out, big as you please, and took up a whore's life also. She took up cheap sex and religion as a sideline diversion, an indulgent recreation, and used anything and anyone, flouting sanity in sanctity alike, stinking up the country. And not once in all this did flighty sister Judah even give me a nod, although she made a show of it from time to time. God's Decree Then God told me, Fickle Israel was a good sight better than flighty Judah. Go and preach this message. Face north toward Israel and say, Turn back, fickle Israel. I'm not just hanging back to punish you. I'm committed in love to you. My anger doesn't seethe non-stop. Just admit your guilt. Admit your God defiance. Admit to your promiscuous life with casual partners. Pulling strangers into the sex and religion groves. While turning a deaf ear to me. God's decree. Come back, wandering children. God's decree. I, yes I, am your true husband. I'll pick you out one by one. This one from the city, these two from the country. And bring you to Zion. I'll give you good shepherd rulers who rule my way. Who rule you with intelligence and wisdom. And this is what will happen, you will increase and prosper in the land. The time will come, God's decree, when no one will say any longer, Oh, for the good old days. Remember the Ark of the Covenant? It won't even occur to anyone to say it, the good old days. The so-called good old days of the Ark are gone for good. Jerusalem will be the new Ark, God's throne. All the godless nations, no longer stuck in the ruts of their evil ways, will gather there to honor God. At that time, the house of Judah will join up with the house of Israel. Holding hands, they'll leave the north country and come to the land I willed to your ancestors. I planned what I'd say if you return to me. Good. I'll bring you back into the family. I'll give you choice land. Land that the godless nations would die for. And I imagine that you would say, Dear Father. And would never again go off and leave me. But no luck. Like a false-hearted woman walking out on her husband. You, the whole family of Israel, have proven false to me. God's decree. The sound of voices comes drifting out of the hills. The unhappy sound of Israel's crying. Israel lamenting the wasted years. Never once giving her God a thought. Come back, wandering children. I can heal your wanderlust. We're here. We've come back to you. You're our own true God. All that popular religion was a cheap lie. Duped crowds buying up the latest in gods. We're back. Back to our true God. The salvation of Israel. The fraud picked us clean, swindled us. Of what our ancestors bequeathed us. Chipped us out of our inheritance. God blessed flocks and God-given children. We made our bed and now lie in it. All tangled up in the dirty sheets of dishonor. All because we sinned against our God. 
we and our fathers and mothers. From the time we took our first steps, said our first words. We've been rebels, disobeying the voice of our God. If you want to come back, O Israel, you must really come back to me. You must get rid of your stinking sin paraphernalia and not wander away from me anymore. Then you can say words like, as God lives, and have them mean something true and just and right. And the godless nations will get caught up in the blessing, and find something in Israel to write home about. Here's another message from God. To the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Plow your unplowed fields, but then don't plant weeds in the soil. Yes, circumcise your lives for God's sake. Plow your unplowed hearts. All you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Prevent fire, the fire of my anger. For once it starts it can't be put out. Your wicked ways. Are fuel for the fire. Sound the alarm in Judah. Broadcast the news in Jerusalem. Say, blow the ram's horn trumpet through the land. Shout out, a bullhorn bellow. Close ranks. Run for your lives to the shelters. Send up a flare warning Zion. Not a minute to lose. Don't sit on your hands. Disasters descending from the north. I set it off. When it lands, it will shake the foundations. Invaders have pounced like a lion from its cover. Ready to rip nations to shreds. Leaving your land in rack and ruin. Your cities in rubble, abandoned. Dress in funereal black. Weep and wail. For God's sledgehammer anger. Has slammed into us head on. When this happens. God's decree. King and princes will lose heart. Priests will be baffled and prophets stand dumbfounded. Then I said, Alas, Master God. You fed lies to this people this Jerusalem. You assured them, all is well, don't worry. At the very moment when the sword was at their throats. At that time, this people, yes, this very Jerusalem, will be told in plain words. The northern hordes are sweeping in. From the desert steppes. A wind that's up to no good, a gale force wind. I ordered this wind. I'm pronouncing. My hurricane judgment on my people. Look at them. Like banks of storm clouds. Racing, tumbling, their chariots a tornado. Their horses faster than eagles. Woe to us. We're done for. Jerusalem. Scrub the evil from your lives so you'll be fit for salvation. How much longer will you harbor devious and malignant designs within you? What's this? A messenger from Dan? Bad news from Ephraim's hills. Make the report public. Broadcast the news to Jerusalem. Invaders from far off are Raising war cries against Judah's towns. They're all over her, like a dog on a bone. And why? Because she rebelled against me. God's decree. It's the way you've lived. That's brought all this on you. The bitter taste is from your evil life. That's what's piercing your heart. I'm doubled up with cramps in my belly. A poker burns in my gut. My insides are tearing me up. Never a moment's peace. The ram's horn trumpet blast rings in my ears. The signal for all-out war. 
Disaster hard on the heels of disaster. The whole country in ruins. In one stroke my home is destroyed. The walls flattened in the blink of an eye. How long do I have to look at the warning flares? Listen to the siren of danger. What fools my people are. They have no idea who I am. A company of half-wits. Dopes and donkeys all. Experts at evil. But klutzes at good. I looked at the earth. It was back to pre-Genesis chaos and emptiness. I looked at the skies. And not a star to be seen. I looked at the mountains. They were trembling like aspen leaves. And all the hills. Rocking back and forth in the wind. I looked, what's this? Not a man or woman in sight. And not a bird to be seen in the skies. I looked, this can't be. Every garden and orchard shriveled up. All the towns were ghost towns. And all this because of God. Because of the blazing anger of God. Yes, this is God's word on the matter, the whole country will be laid waste. Still it won't be the end of the world. The earth will mourn. And the skies lament. Because I've given my word and won't take it back. I've decided and won't change my mind. Someone shouts, horsemen and archers. And everybody runs for cover. They hide in ditches. They climb into caves. The cities are emptied. Not a person left anywhere. And you, what do you think you're up to? Dressing up in party clothes. Decking yourselves out in jewelry. Putting on lipstick and rouge and mascara. Your primping goes for nothing. You're not going to seduce anyone. They're out to kill you. And what's that I hear? The cry of a woman in labor. The screams of a mother giving birth to her firstborn. It's the cry of daughter Zion, gasping for breath. Reaching out for help. Help, oh help me. I'm dying. The killers are on me. Patrol Jerusalem's streets. Look around. Take note. Search the market squares. See if you can find one man, one woman. A single soul who does what is right. And tries to live a true life. I want to forgive that person. God's decree. But if all they do is say, as sure as God lives. They're nothing but a bunch of liars. But you, God. You have an eye for truth, don't you? You hit them hard, but it didn't faze them. You disciplined them, but they refused correction. Hard-headed, harder than rock. They wouldn't change. Then I said to myself, well, these are just poor people. They don't know any better. They were never taught anything about God. They never went to prayer meetings. I'll find some people from the best families. I'll talk to them. They'll know what's going on, the way God works. They'll know the score. But they were no better. Rebels all. Off doing their own thing. The invaders are ready to pounce and kill. Like a mountain lion, a wilderness wolf. Panthers on the prowl. The streets aren't safe anymore. And why? Because the people's sins are piled sky high. Their betrayals are past counting. Why should I even bother with you any longer? Your children wander off, leaving me. Taking up with gods. That aren't even gods. I satisfied their deepest needs, 
and then they went off with the sacred whores. Left me for orgies in sex shrines. A bunch of well-groomed, lusty stallions. Each one pawing and snorting for his neighbor's wife. Do you think I'm going to stand around and do nothing? God's decree. Don't you think I'll take serious measures? Against a people like this? Go down the rows of vineyards and rip out the vines. But not all of them. Leave a few. Prune back those vines. That growth didn't come from God. They've betrayed me over and over again. Judah and Israel both. God's decree. They've spread lies about God. They've said, there's nothing to him. Nothing bad will happen to us. Neither famine nor war will come our way. The prophets are all windbags. They speak nothing but nonsense. Therefore, this is what God said to me, God of the angel armies. Because they have talked this way. They are going to eat those words. Watch now. I'm putting my words. As fire in your mouth. And the people are a pile of kindling. Ready to go up in flames. Attention. I'm bringing a far off nation. Against you, O house of Israel. God's decree. A solid nation. An ancient nation. A nation that speaks another language. You won't understand a word they say. When they aim their arrows, you're as good as dead. They're a nation of real fighters. They'll clean you out of house and home. Rob you of crops and children alike. They'll feast on your sheep and cattle. Strip your vines and fig trees. And the fortresses that made you feel so safe. Leveled with a stroke of the sword. Even then, as bad as it will be, God's decree, it will not be the end of the world for you. And when people ask, why did our God do all this to us, you must say to them, this is back on you. Just as you left me and served foreign gods in your own country, so now you must serve foreigners in their own country. Tell the house of Jacob this. Put out this bulletin in Judah. Listen to this. You scatterbrains, airheads. With eyes that see but don't really look. And ears that hear but don't really listen. Why don't you honor me? Why aren't you in awe before me? Yes, me, who made the shorelines. To contain the ocean waters. I drew a line in the sand. That cannot be crossed. Waves roll in but cannot get through. Breakers crash but that's the end of them. But this people, what a people. Uncontrollable, untamable runaways. It never occurs to them to say. How can we honor our God with our lives? The God who gives rain in both spring and autumn. And maintains the rhythm of the seasons. Who sets aside time each year for harvest. And keeps everything running smoothly for us. Of course you don't. Your bad behavior blinds you to all this. Your sins keep my blessings at a distance. My people are infiltrated by wicked men. Unscrupulous men on the hunt. They set traps for the unsuspecting. Their victims are innocent men and women. Their houses are stuffed with ill-gotten game. Like a hunter's bag full of birds. Pretentious and powerful and rich. Hugely obese, oily with rolls of fat. Worse, they have no conscience. Right and wrong mean nothing to them. They stand for nothing, stand up for no one. Throw orphans to the wolves, 
exploit the poor. Do you think I'll stand by and do nothing about this? God's decree. Don't you think I'll take serious measures? Against a people like this? Unspeakable. Sickening. What's happened in this country? Prophets preach lies. And priests hire on as their assistants. And my people love it. They eat it up. But what will you do when it's time to pick up the pieces? Run for your lives, children of Benjamin. Get out of Jerusalem, and now. Give a blast on the ram's horn in Blastville. Send up smoke signals from Smoketown. Doom pours out of the north. Massive terror. I have likened my dear daughter Zion. To a lovely meadow. Well, now, shepherds from the north have discovered her. And brought in their flocks of soldiers. They've pitched camp all around her. And plan where they'll graze. And then, prepare to attack. The fight is on. To arms. We'll strike at noon. Oh, it's too late. Day is dying. Evening shadows are upon us. Well, up anyway. We'll attack by night. And tear apart her defenses stone by stone. God of the angel armies gave the orders, chop down her trees. Build a siege ramp against Jerusalem. A city full of brutality. Bursting with violence. Just as a well holds a good supply of water. She supplies wickedness non-stop. The streets echo the cries, violence. Rape. Victims, bleeding and moaning, lie all over the place. You're in deep trouble, Jerusalem. You've pushed me to the limit. You're on the brink of being wiped out. Being turned into a ghost town. More orders from God of the Angel Armies, time's up. Harvest the grapes for judgment. Salvage what's left of Israel. Go back over the vines. Pick them clean, every last grape. I've got something to say. Is anybody listening? I've a warning to post. Will anyone notice? It's hopeless. Their ears are stuffed with wax. Deaf as a post, blind as a bat. It's hopeless. They've tuned out God. They don't want to hear from me. But I'm bursting with the wrath of God. I can't hold it in much longer. So dump it on the children in the streets. Let it loose on the gangs of youth. For no one's exempt, husbands and wives will be taken. The old and those ready to die. Their homes will be given away. All they own, even their loved ones. When I give the signal. Against all who live in this country. God's decree. Everyone's after the dishonest dollar. Little people and big people alike. Prophets and priests and everyone in between. Twist words and doctor truth. My people are broken, shattered. And they put on band-aids. Saying, it's not so bad. You'll be just fine. But things are not just fine. Do you suppose they are embarrassed? Over this outrage? No, they have no shame. They don't even know how to blush. There's no hope for them. They've hit bottom. And there's no getting up. As far as I'm concerned. They're finished. God has spoken. God's message yet again, go stand at the crossroads and look around. Ask for directions to the old road. The tried and true road. Then take it. 
discover the right route for your souls. But they said, nothing doing. We aren't going that way. I even provided watchmen for them. To warn them, to set off the alarm. But the people said, it's a false alarm. It doesn't concern us. And so I'm calling in the nations as witnesses. Watch, witnesses, what happens to them. And, pay attention, earth. Don't miss these bulletins. I'm visiting catastrophe on this people, the end result. Of the games they've been playing with me. They've ignored everything I've said. Had nothing but contempt for my teaching. What would I want with incense brought in from Sheba? Rare spices from exotic places. Your burnt sacrifices in worship give me no pleasure. Your religious rituals mean nothing to me. So listen to this. Here's God's verdict on your way of life, watch out. I'm putting roadblocks and barriers. On the road you're taking. They'll send you sprawling. Parents and children, neighbors and friends. And that will be the end of the lot of you. And listen to this verdict from God, look out. An invasion from the north. A mighty power on the move from a faraway place. Armed to the teeth. Vicious and pitiless. Booming like sea storm and thunder, tramp, tramp, tramp. Riding hard on war horses. In battle formation. Against you, dear daughter Zion. We've heard the news. And we're as limp as wet dish rags. We're paralyzed with fear. Terror has a death grip on our throats. Don't dare go outdoors. Don't leave the house. Death is on the prowl. Danger everywhere. Dear daughter Zion, dress in black. Blacken your face with ashes. Weep most bitterly. As for an only child. The countdown has begun. Six, five, four, three. The terror is on us. God gave me this task I have made you the examiner of my people. To examine and weigh their lives. They're a thick head, hard-nosed bunch. Rotten to the core, the lot of them. Refining fires are cranked up to white heat. But the ore stays a lump, unchanged. It's useless to keep trying any longer. Nothing can refine evil out of them. Men will give up and call them slag. Thrown on the slag heap by me, their God. The message from God to Jeremiah, stand in the gate of God's temple and preach this message. Say, listen, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship God. God of the angel armies, Israel's God, has this to say to you. Clean up your act, the way you live, the things you do, so I can make my home with you in this place. Don't for a minute believe the lies being spoken here, this is God's temple, God's temple, God's temple. Total nonsense. Only if you clean up your act, the way you live, the things you do, only if you do a total spring cleaning on the way you live and treat your neighbors, only if you quit exploiting the street people and orphans and widows, no longer taking advantage of innocent people on this very site and no longer destroying your souls by using this temple as a front for other gods, only then will I move into your neighborhood. Only then will this country I gave your ancestors be my permanent home, my temple. Get smart. Your leaders are handing you a pack of lies, and you're swallowing them. Use your heads. Do you think you can rob and murder, have sex with the neighborhood wives, tell lies non-stop, worship the local gods, and buy every novel religious commodity on the market, 
and then march into this temple, set apart for my worship, and say, we're safe, thinking that the place itself gives you a license to go on with all this outrageous sacrilege. A cave full of criminals. Do you think you can turn this temple, set apart for my worship, into something like that? Well, think again. I've got eyes in my head. I can see what's going on. God's decree. Take a trip down to the place that was once in Shiloh, where I met my people in the early days. Take a look at those ruins, what I did to it because of the evil ways of my people Israel. So now, because of the way you have lived and failed to listen, even though time and again I took you aside and talked seriously with you, and because you refused to change when I called you to repent, I'm going to do to this temple, set aside for my worship, this place you think is going to keep you safe no matter what, this place I gave as a gift to your ancestors and you, the same as I did to Shiloh. And as for you, I'm going to get rid of you, the same as I got rid of those old relatives of yours around Shiloh, your fellow Israelites in that former kingdom to the north. And you, Jeremiah, don't waste your time praying for this people. Don't offer to make petitions or intercessions. Don't bother me with them. I'm not listening. Can't you see what they're doing in all the villages of Judah and in the Jerusalem streets? Why, they've got the children gathering wood while the fathers build fires and the mothers make bread to be offered to the Queen of Heaven. And as if that weren't bad enough, they go around pouring out libations to any other gods they come across, just to hurt me. But is it me they're hurting? God's decree. Aren't they just hurting themselves? Exposing themselves shamefully? Making themselves ridiculous? Here's what the Master God has to say, my white-hot anger is about to descend on this country and everything in it, people and animals, trees in the field and vegetables in the garden, a raging wildfire that no one can put out. The message from God of the angel armies, Israel's God, go ahead. Put your burnt offerings with all your other sacrificial offerings and make a good meal for yourselves. I sure don't want them. When I delivered your ancestors out of Egypt, I never said anything to them about wanting burnt offerings and sacrifices as such. But I did say this, commanded this, obey me. Do what I say and I will be your God and you will be my people. Live the way I tell you. Do what I command so that your lives will go well. But do you think they listened? Not a word of it. They did just what they wanted to do, indulged any and every evil whim and got worse day by day. From the time your ancestors left the land of Egypt until now, I've supplied a steady stream of my servants the prophets, but do you think the people listened? Not once. Stubborn as mules and worse than their ancestors. Tell them all this, but don't expect them to listen. Call out to them, but don't expect an answer. Tell them, you are the nation that wouldn't obey God, that refused all discipline. Truth has disappeared. There's not a trace of it left in your mouths. So shave your heads. Go bald to the hills and lament. For God has rejected and left. This generation that has made him so angry. The people of Judah have lived evil lives while I've stood by and watched. God's decree. In deliberate insult to me, they've set up their obscene God images in the very temple that was built to honor me. They've constructed Topheth altars for burning babies in prominent places all through the valley of Ben Hinnom, altars for burning their sons and daughters alive in the fire a shocking perversion of all that I am and all I command. But soon, very soon, God's decree, the names Topheth and Ben-Hinnom will no longer be used. 
They'll call the place what it is, Murder Meadow. Corpses will be stacked up in Topheth because there's no room left to bury them. Corpses abandoned in the open air, fed on by crows and coyotes, who have the run of the place. And I'll empty both smiles and laughter from the villages of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. No wedding songs, no holiday sounds. Dead silence. And when the time comes, God's decree, I'll see to it that they dig up the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of the princes and priests and prophets, and yes, even the bones of the common people. They'll dig them up and spread them out like a congregation at worship before sun, moon, and stars, all those sky gods they've been so infatuated with all these years, following their lucky stars in dog-like devotion. The bones will be left scattered and exposed, to re-enter the soil as fertilizer, like manure. Everyone left, all from this evil generation unlucky enough to still be alive in whatever godforsaken place I will have driven them to, will wish they were dead. Decree of God of the Angel Armies Tell them this, God's message, do people fall down and not get up? Or take the wrong road and then just keep going? So why does this people go backward? And just keep on going, backward? They stubbornly hold on to their illusions. Refuse to change direction. I listened carefully. But heard not so much as a whisper. No one expressed one word of regret. Not a single, I'm sorry, did I hear. They just kept at it, blindly and stupidly. Banging their heads against a brick wall. Cranes know when it's time. To move south for winter. And robins, warblers, and bluebirds. Know when it's time to come back again. But my people, my people know nothing. Not the first thing of God and His rule. How can you say, we know the score? We're the proud owners of God's revelation. Look where it's gotten you, stuck in illusion. Your religion experts have taken you for a ride. Your know-it-alls will be unmasked. Caught and shown up for what they are. Look at them. They know everything but God's word. Do you call that, knowing? So here's what will happen to the know-it-alls. I'll make them wifeless and homeless. Everyone's after the dishonest dollar. Little people and big people alike. Prophets and priests and everyone in between. Twist words and doctor truth. My dear daughter, my people, broken, shattered. And yet they put on band-aids. Saying, it's not so bad. You'll be just fine. But things are not just fine. Do you suppose they are embarrassed? Over this outrage? Not really. They have no shame. They don't even know how to blush. There's no hope for them. They've hit bottom. And there's no getting up. As far as I'm concerned. They're finished. God has spoken. I went out to see if I could salvage anything. God's decree. But found nothing. Not a grape, not a fig. Just a few withered leaves. I'm taking back. Everything I gave them. So why are we sitting here, doing nothing? Let's get organized. Let's go to the big city. And at least die fighting. We've gotten God's ultimatum. We're damned if we do and damned if we don't. Damned because of our sin against Him. We hoped things would turn out for the best. But it didn't happen that way. We were waiting around for healing. And terror showed up. 
From Dan at the northern borders. We hear the hooves of horses. Horses galloping, horses neighing. The ground shudders and quakes. They're going to swallow up the whole country. Towns and people alike, fodder for war. What's more, I'm dispatching. Poisonous snakes among you. Snakes that can't be charmed. Snakes that will bite you and kill you. God's decree. I drown in grief. I'm heartsick. Oh, listen. Please listen. It's the cry of my dear people. Reverberating through the country. Is God no longer in Zion? Has the king gone away? Can you tell me why they flaunt their plaything gods? They're silly, imported no gods before me. The crops are in, the summer is over. But for us nothing's changed. We're still waiting to be rescued. For my dear broken people, I'm heartbroken. I weep, seized by grief. Are there no healing ointments in Gilead? Isn't there a doctor in the house? So why can't something be done? To heal and save my dear, dear people. I wish my head were a well of water. And my eyes fountains of tears. So I could weep day and night. For casualties among my dear, dear people. At times I wish I had a wilderness hut. A backwoods cabin. Where I could get away from my people. And never see them again. They're a faithless, feckless bunch. A congregation of degenerates. Their tongues shoot out lies. Like a bow shoots arrows. A mighty army of liars. The sworn enemies of truth. They advance from one evil to the next. Ignorant of me. God's decree. Be wary of even long-time neighbors. Don't even trust your grandmother. Brother schemes against brother. Like old cheating Jacob. Friend against friend. Spreads malicious gossip. Neighbors jip neighbors. Never telling the truth. They've trained their tongues to tell lies. And now they can't tell the truth. They pile wrong upon wrong, stack lie upon lie. And refuse to know me. God's decree. Therefore, God of the angel armies says, watch this. I'll melt them down. And see what they're made of. What else can I do? With a people this wicked? Their tongues are poison arrows. Deadly lies stream from their mouths. Neighbor greets neighbor with a smile. Good morning. How are things? While scheming to do away with him. Do you think I'm going to stand around and do nothing? God's decree. Don't you think I'll take serious measures? Against a people like this? I'm lamenting the loss of the mountain pastures. I'm chanting dirges for the old grazing grounds. They've become deserted wastelands too dangerous for travelers. No sounds of sheep bleeding or cattle mooing. Birds and wild animals, all gone. Nothing stirring, no sounds of life. I'm going to make Jerusalem a pile of rubble. Fit for nothing but stray cats and dogs. I'm going to reduce Judah's towns to piles of ruins. Where no one lives. I asked, is there anyone around bright enough to tell us what's going on here? Anyone who has the inside story from God and can let us in on it, why is the country wasted, why no travelers in this desert? God's answer, because they abandoned my plain teaching. They wouldn't listen to anything I said, refused to live the way I told them to. 
Instead they lived any way they wanted and took up with the Baal gods, who they thought would give them what they wanted, following the example of their parents. And this is the consequence. God of the angel armies says so, I'll feed them with pig slop, I'll give them poison to drink. Then I'll scatter them far and wide among godless peoples that neither they nor their parents have ever heard of, and I'll send death in pursuit until there's nothing left of them. A message from God of the angel armies, look over the trouble we're in and call for help. Send for some singers who can help us mourn our loss. Tell them to hurry to help us express our loss and lament. Help us get our tears flowing. Make tearful music of our crying. Listen to it. Listen to that torrent of tears out of Zion. We're a ruined people. We're a shamed people. We've been driven from our homes. And must leave our land. Mourning women. Oh. Listen to God's message. Open your ears. Take in what he says. Teach your daughters songs for the dead. And your friends the songs of heartbreak. Death has climbed in through the window. Broken into our bedrooms. Children on the playgrounds drop dead. And young men and women collapse at their games. Speak up. God's message dead bodies everywhere, scattered at random. Like sheep and goat dung in the fields. Like wheat cut down by reapers. And left to rot where it falls. God's message don't let the wise brag of their wisdom. Don't let heroes brag of their exploits. Don't let the rich brag of their riches. If you brag, brag of this and this only. That you understand and know me. I'm God, and I act in loyal love. I do what's right and set things right and fair. And delight in those who do the same things. These are my trademarks. God's decree. Stay alert. It won't be long now, God's decree when I will personally deal with everyone whose life is all outside but no inside, Egypt, Judah, Edom, Ammon, Moab. All these nations are big on performance religion, including Israel, who is no better. Listen to the message that God is sending your way, house of Israel. Listen most carefully, don't take the godless nations as your models. Don't be impressed by their glamour and glitz. No matter how much they're impressed. The religion of these peoples is nothing but smoke. An idol is nothing but a tree chopped down. Then shaped by a woodsman's axe. They trim it with tinsel and balls. Use hammer and nails to keep it upright. It's like a scarecrow in a cabbage patch, can't talk. Deadwood that has to be carried, can't walk. Don't be impressed by such stuff. It's useless for either good or evil. All this is nothing compared to you, O oh God. You're wondrously great, famously great. Who can fail to be impressed by you, King of the Nations? It's your very nature to be worshipped. Look far and wide among the elite of the nations. The best they can come up with is nothing compared to you. Stupidly, they line them up, a lineup of sticks. Good for nothing but making smoke. Gilded with silver foil from Tarshish. Covered with gold from Uphaz. Hung with violet and purple fabrics. No matter how fancy the sticks, they're still sticks. But God is the real thing. The living God, the eternal King. When he's angry, earth shakes. Yes, and the godless nations quake. Tell them this, the stick gods. Who made nothing, 
neither sky nor earth will come to nothing on the earth and under the sky. But it is God whose power made the earth, whose wisdom gave shape to the world, who crafted the cosmos. He thunders, and rain pours down. He sends the clouds soaring. He embellishes the storm with lightnings, launches wind from his warehouse. Stick God worshippers looking mighty foolish. God makers embarrassed by their handmade gods. Their gods are frauds, dead sticks. Deadwood gods, tasteless jokes. When the fires of judgment come, they'll be ashes. But the portion of Jacob is the real thing. He put the whole universe together and pays special attention to Israel. His name. God of the angel armies. Grab your bags. All you who are under attack. God has given notice. Attention. I'm evicting. Everyone who lives here. And right now, yes, right now. I'm going to press them to the limit squeeze the life right out of them. But it's a black day for me. Hopelessly wounded. I said, why, oh why? Did I think I could bear it? My house is ruined. The roof caved in. Our children are gone. We'll never see them again. No one left to help in rebuilding. No one to make a new start. It's because our leaders are stupid. They never asked God for counsel. And so nothing worked right. The people are scattered all over. But listen. Something's coming. A big commotion from the northern borders. Judah's town's about to be smashed. Left to all the stray dogs and cats. I know, God that mere mortals can't run their own lives that men and women don't have what it takes to take charge of life so correct us God as you see best don't lose your temper that would be the end of us vent your anger on the godless nations who refuse to acknowledge you and on the people who won't pray to you. The very ones who've made a meal out of Jacob. Yes, made a meal. And devoured him whole. People and pastures alike. The message that came to Jeremiah from God. Preach to the people of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem. Tell them this, this is God's message, the message of Israel's God to you. Anyone who does not keep the terms of this covenant is cursed. The terms are clear. I made them plain to your ancestors when I delivered them from Egypt, out of the iron furnace of suffering. Obey what I tell you. Do exactly what I command you. Your obedience will close the deal. You'll be mine and I'll be yours. This will provide the conditions in which I will be able to do what I promised your ancestors, to give them a fertile and lush land. And, as you know, that's what I did. Yes, God, I replied. That's true. God continued, preach all this in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. Say, listen to the terms of this covenant and carry them out. I warned your ancestors when I delivered them from Egypt and I've kept up the warnings. I haven't quit warning them for a moment. I warned them from morning to night, obey me or else. But they didn't obey. They paid no attention to me. They did whatever they wanted to do, whenever they wanted to do it, until finally I stepped in and ordered the punishment set out in the covenant which, despite all my warnings, they had ignored. 
Then God said, There's a conspiracy among the people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem. They've plotted to reenact the sins of their ancestors, the ones who disobeyed me and decided to go after other gods and worship them. Israel and Judah are in this together, mindlessly breaking the covenant I made with their ancestors. Well, your God has something to say about this, watch out. I'm about to visit doom on you, and no one will get out of it. You're going to cry for help, but I won't listen. Then all the people in Judah and Jerusalem will start praying to the gods you've been sacrificing to all these years, but it won't do a bit of good. You've got as many gods as you have villages, Judah. And you've got enough altars for sacrifices to that impotent sex god Baal to put one on every street corner in Jerusalem. And as for you, Jeremiah, I don't want you praying for this people. Nothing. Not a word of petition. Indeed, I'm not going to listen to a single syllable of their crisis prayers. What business do the ones I love have figuring out? How to get off the hook? And right in the house of worship? Do you think making promises and devising pious programs will save you from doom? Do you think you can get out of this? By becoming more religious? A mighty oak tree, majestic and glorious. That's how I once described you. But it will only take a clap of thunder and a bolt of lightning. To leave you a shattered wreck. I, God of the angel armies, who planted you, yes, I have pronounced doom on you. Why? Because of the disastrous life you've lived, Israel and Judah alike, goading me to anger with your continuous worship and offerings to that sorry God Baal. God told me what was going on. That's how I knew. You, God, opened my eyes to their evil scheming. I had no idea what was going on, naive as a lamb. Being led to slaughter. I didn't know they had it in for me. Didn't know of their behind-the-scenes plots. Let's get rid of the preacher. That will stop the sermons. Let's get rid of him for good. He won't be remembered for long. Then I said, God of the angel armies. You're a fair judge. You examine and cross-examine. Human actions and motives. I want to see these people shown up and put down. I'm an open book before you. Clear my name. That sent a signal to God, who spoke up, here's what I'll do to the men of Anathoth who are trying to murder you, the men who say, don't preach to us in God's name or we'll kill you. Yes, it's God of the angel armies speaking. Indeed. I'll call them to account, their young people will die in battle, their children will die of starvation, and there will be no one left at all, none. I'm visiting the men of Anathoth with doom. Doomsday. You are right, O oh God, and you set things right. I can't argue with that. But I do have some questions. Why do bad people have it so good? Why do con artists make it big? You planted them and they put down roots. They flourished and produced fruit. They talk as if they're old friends with you. But they couldn't care less about you. Meanwhile, you know me inside and out. You don't let me get by with a thing. Make them pay for the way they live. Pay with their lives, like sheep marked for slaughter. How long do we have to put up with this? The country depressed, the farms in ruin. And all because of wickedness, these wicked lives. Even animals and birds are dying off. Because they'll have nothing to do with God. And think God has nothing to do with them. So, 
Jeremiah, if you're worn out in this foot race with men, what makes you think you can race against horses? And if you can't keep your wits during times of calm, what's going to happen when troubles break loose? Like the Jordan in flood? Those closest to you, your own brothers and cousins, are working against you. They're out to get you. They'll stop at nothing. Don't trust them, especially when they're smiling. I will abandon the house of Israel. Walk away from my beloved people. I will turn over those I most love. To those who are her enemies. She's been, this one I held dear. Like a snarling lion in the jungle. Growling and baring her teeth at me. And I can't take it anymore. Has this one I hold dear become a preening peacock? But isn't she under attack by vultures? Then invite all the hungry animals at large. Invite them in for a free meal. Foreign, scavenging shepherds. Will loot and trample my fields. Turn my beautiful, well cared for fields. Into vacant lots of tin cans and thistles. They leave them littered with junk. A ruined land, a land in lament. The whole countryside is a wasteland. And no one will really care. The barbarians will invade. Swarm over hills and plains. The judgment sword of God will take its toll. From one end of the land to the other. Nothing living will be safe. They will plant wheat and reap weeds. Nothing they do will work out. They will look at their meager crops and wring their hands. All this the result of God's fierce anger. God's message, regarding all the bad neighbors who abuse the land I gave to Israel as their inheritance, I'm going to pluck them out of their lands, and then pluck Judah out from among them. Once I've pulled the bad neighbors out, I will relent and take them tenderly to my heart and put them back where they belong, put each of them back in their home country, on their family farms. Then if they will get serious about living my way and pray to me as well as they taught my people to pray to that God ball, everything will go well for them. But if they won't listen, then I'll pull them out of their land by the roots and cart them off to the dump. Total Destruction God's decree. God told me, go and buy yourself some linen shorts. Put them on and keep them on. Don't even take them off to wash them. So I bought the shorts as God directed and put them on. Then God told me, take the shorts that you bought and go straight to Perith and hide them there in a crack in the rock. So I did what God told me and hid them at Perith. Next, after quite a long time, God told me, go back to Perith and get the linen shorts I told you to hide there. So I went back to Perith and dug them out of the place where I had hidden them. The shorts by then had rotted and were worthless. God explained, this is the way I am going to ruin the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem, a wicked bunch of people who won't obey me, who do only what they want to do, who chase after all kinds of no-gods and worship them. They're going to turn out as rotten as these old shorts. Just as shorts clothe and protect, so I kept the whole family of Israel under my care, God's decree, so that everyone could see they were my people, a people I could show off to the world and be proud of. But they refused to do a thing I said. And then tell them this, God's message, personal from the God of Israel, every wine jug should be full of wine. And they'll say, of course. We know that. Every wine jug should be full of wine. Then you'll say, this is what God says, watch closely. I'm going to fill every person who lives in this country, the kings who rule from David's throne, the priests, the prophets, the citizens of Jerusalem, 
with wine that will make them drunk. And then I'll smash them, smash the wine-filled jugs, old and young alike. Nothing will stop me. Not an ounce of pity or mercy or compassion will slow me down. Every last drunken jug of them will be smashed. Then I said, listen. Listen carefully, don't stay stuck in your ways. It's God's message we're dealing with here. Let your lives glow bright before God. Before He turns out the lights. Before you trip and fall. On the dark mountain paths. The light you always took for granted will go out. And the world will turn black. If you people won't listen. I'll go off by myself and weep over you. Weep because of your stubborn arrogance. Bitter, bitter tears. Rivers of tears from my eyes. Because God's sheep will end up in exile. Tell the king and the queen mother. Come down off your high horses. Your dazzling crowns. Will tumble off your heads. The villages in the Negev will be surrounded. Everyone trapped. And Judah dragged off to exile. The whole country dragged to oblivion. Look, look, Jerusalem. Look at the enemies coming out of the north. What will become of your flocks of people? The beautiful flocks in your care. How are you going to feel when the people you've played up to, looked up to all these years. Now look down on you. You didn't expect this. Surprise. The pain of a woman having a baby. Do I hear you saying? What's going on here? Why me? The answer's simple, you're guilty. Hugely guilty. Your guilt has your life endangered. Your guilt has you writhing in pain. Can an African change skin? Can a leopard get rid of its spots? So what are the odds on you doing good? You who are so long practiced in evil. I'll blow these people away. Like wind-blown leaves. You have it coming to you. I've measured it out precisely. God's decree. It's because you forgot me. And embraced the big lie. That so-called God ball. I'm the one who will rip off your clothes. Expose and shame you before the watching world. Your obsessions with gods, gods, and more gods. Your goddess affairs, your god adulteries. Gods on the hills, gods in the fields. Every time I look you're off with another god. Oh Jerusalem, what a sordid life. Is there any hope for you? God's message that came to Jeremiah regarding the drought, Judah weeps. Her cities mourn. The people fall to the ground, moaning. While sounds of Jerusalem's sobs rise up, up. The rich people sent their servants for water. They went to the cisterns, but the cisterns were dry. They came back with empty buckets. Wringing their hands, shaking their heads. All the farm work has stopped. Not a drop of rain has fallen. The farmers don't know what to do. They wring their hands, they shake their heads. Even the doe abandons her fawn in the field. Because there is no grass. Eyes glazed over, on her last legs. Nothing but skin and bones. We know we're guilty. We've lived bad lives. But do something, God. Do it for your sake. Time and time again we've betrayed you. No doubt about it, we've sinned against you. Hope of Israel. Our only hope. Israel's last chance in this trouble. 
Why are you acting like a tourist? Taking in the sights, here today, and gone tomorrow. Why do you just stand there and stare? Like someone who doesn't know what to do in a crisis. But God, you are, in fact, here, here with us. You know who we are, you named us. Don't leave us without a leg to stand on. Then God said of these people, since they love to wander this way and that. Never giving a thought to where they were going. I will now have nothing more to do with them. Except to note their guilt and punish their sins. God said to me, don't pray that everything will turn out all right for this people. When they skip their meals in order to pray, I won't listen to a thing they say. When they redouble their prayers, bringing all kinds of offerings from their herds and crops, I'll not accept them. I'm finishing them off with war and famine and disease. I said, but Master, God. Their preachers have been telling them that everything is going to be all right, no war and no famine, that there's nothing to worry about. Then God said, these preachers are liars, and they use my name to cover their lies. I never sent them, I never commanded them, and I don't talk with them. The sermons they've been handing out are sheer illusion, tissues of lies, whistlings in the dark. So this is my verdict on them, all the preachers who preach using my name as their text, preachers I never sent in the first place, preachers who say, war and famine will never come here, these preachers will die in war and by starvation. And the people to whom they've been preaching will end up as corpses, victims of war and starvation, thrown out in the streets of Jerusalem unburied, no funerals for them or their wives or their children. I'll make sure they get the full brunt of all their evil. And you, Jeremiah, will say this to them, my eyes pour out tears. Day and night, the tears never quit. My dear, dear people are battered and bruised. Hopelessly and cruelly wounded. I walk out into the fields. Shocked by the killing field strewn with corpses. I walk into the city. Shocked by the sight of starving bodies. And I watch the preachers and priests. Going about their business as if nothing's happened. God, have you said your final no to Judah? Can you simply not stand Zion any longer? If not, why have you treated us like this? Beaten us nearly to death. We hoped for peace. Nothing good came from it. We looked for healing. And got kicked in the stomach. We admit, O oh God, how badly we've lived. And our ancestors, how bad they were. We've sinned, they've sinned. We've all sinned against you. Your reputation is at stake. Don't quit on us. Don't walk out and abandon your glorious temple. Remember your covenant. Don't break faith with us. Can the no-gods of the godless nations cause rain? Can the sky water the earth by itself? You're the one, O oh God, who does this. So you're the one for whom we wait. You made it all. You do it all. Then God said to me, Jeremiah, even if Moses and Samuel stood here and made their case, I wouldn't feel a thing for this people. Get them out of here. Tell them to get lost. And if they ask you, so where do we go, tell them God says, if you're assigned to die, go and die. If assigned to war, go and get killed. If assigned to starve, go starve. If assigned to exile, off to exile you go. I've arranged for four kinds of punishment, death in battle, the corpses dropped off by killer dogs, the rest picked clean by vultures, the bones gnawed by hyenas. 
There'll be a sight to see, a sight to shock the whole world, and all because of Manasseh son of Hezekiah and all he did in Jerusalem. Who do you think will feel sorry for you, Jerusalem? Who do you think will waste tears on you? Who will bother to take the time to ask? So, how are things going? You left me, remember? God's decree. You turned your back and walked out. So I will grab you and hit you hard. I'm tired of letting you off the hook. I threw you to the four winds. And let the wind scatter you like leaves. I made sure you'll lose everything. Since nothing makes you change. I created more widows among you. Then grains of sand on the ocean beaches. At noon mothers will get the news. Of their sons killed in action. Sudden anguish for the mothers. All those terrible deaths. A mother of seven falls to the ground. Gasping for breath. Robbed of her children in their prime. Her sun sets at high noon. Then I'll round up any of you that are left alive. And see that you're killed by your enemies. God's decree. Unlucky mother, that you had me as a son. Given the unhappy job of indicting the whole country. I've never hurt or harmed a soul. And yet everyone is out to get me. But, God knows, I've done everything I could to help them. Prayed for them and against their enemies. I've always been on their side, trying to stave off disaster. God knows how I've tried. O oh Israel, O oh Judah, what are your chances? Against the iron juggernaut from the north. In punishment for your sins, I'm giving away. Everything you've got, giving it away for nothing. I'll make you slaves to your enemies. In a strange and far off land. My anger is blazing and fierce. Burning in hot judgment against you. You know where I am, God. Remember what I'm doing here. Take my side against my detractors. Don't stand back while they ruin me. Just look at the abuse I'm taking. When your words showed up, I ate them. Swallowed them whole. What a feast. What delight I took in being yours. O oh God, God of the angel armies. I never joined the party crowd. In their laughter and their fun. Led by you, I went off by myself. You'd filled me with indignation. Their sin had me seething. But why, why this chronic pain? This ever worsening wound and no healing in sight. You're nothing, God, but a mirage. A lovely oasis in the distance, and then nothing. This is how God answered me, take back those words, and I'll take you back. Then you'll stand tall before me. Use words truly and well. Don't stoop to cheap whining. Then, but only then, you'll speak for me. Let your words change them. Don't change your words to suit them. I'll turn you into a steel wall. A thick steel wall, impregnable. They'll attack you but won't put a dent in you. Because I'm at your side, defending and delivering. God's decree. I'll deliver you from the grip of the wicked. I'll get you out of the clutch of the ruthless. God's message to me. Jeremiah, don't get married. Don't raise a family here. I have signed the death warrant on all the children born in this country, the mothers who bear them and the fathers who beget them, an epidemic of death. Death unlamented, the dead unburied, dead bodies decomposing and stinking like dung, all the killed and starved corpses served up as meals for carrion crows and mongrel dogs. 
God continued, Don't enter a house where there's mourning. Don't go to the funeral. Don't sympathize. I've quit caring about what happens to this people. God's decree. No more loyal love on my part, no more compassion. The famous and obscure will die alike here, unlamented and unburied. No funerals will be conducted, no one will give them a second thought, no one will care, no one will say, I'm sorry, no one will so much as offer a cup of tea, not even for the mother or father. And if there happens to be a feast celebrated, don't go there either to enjoy the festivities. God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, watch this. I'm about to banish smiles and laughter from this place. No more brides and bridegrooms celebrating. And I'm doing it in your lifetime, before your very eyes. When you tell this to the people and they ask, why is God talking this way, threatening us with all these calamities? We're not criminals, after all. What have we done to our God to be treated like this, tell them this, it's because your ancestors left me, walked off and never looked back. They took up with the no gods, worshipped and doted on them, and ignored me and wouldn't do a thing I told them. And you're even worse. Take a good look in the mirror, each of you doing whatever you want, whenever you want, refusing to pay attention to me. And for this I'm getting rid of you, throwing you out in the cold, into a far and strange country. You can worship your precious no-gods there to your heart's content. Rest assured, I won't bother you anymore. On the other hand, don't miss this, the time is coming when no one will say any longer, as sure as God lives, the God who delivered Israel from Egypt. What they'll say is, as sure as God lives, the God who brought Israel back from the land of the north, brought them back from all the places where he'd scattered them. That's right, I'm going to bring them back to the land I first gave to their ancestors. Now, watch for what comes next, I'm going to assemble a bunch of fishermen. God's decree. They'll go fishing for my people and pull them in for judgment. Then I'll send out a party of hunters, and they'll hunt them out in all the mountains, hills, and caves. I'm watching their every move. I haven't lost track of a single one of them, neither them nor their sins. They won't get by with a thing. They'll pay double for everything they did wrong. They've made a complete mess of things, littering their lives with their obscene no-gods, leaving piles of stinking god junk all over the place. God, my strength, my stronghold. My safe retreat when trouble descends. The godless nations will come. From earth's four corners, saying. Our ancestors lived on lies. Useless illusions, all smoke. Can mortals manufacture gods? Their factories turn out no gods. Watch closely now. I'm going to teach these wrong-headed people. Starting right now, I'm going to teach them. Who I am and what I do. Teach them the meaning of my name, God, I am. Judah's sin is engraved. With a steel chisel. A steel chisel with a diamond point. Engraved on their granite hearts. Engraved on the stone corners of their altars. The evidence against them is plain to see. Sex and religion altars and sacred sex shrines. Anywhere there's a grove of trees. Anywhere there's an available hill. I'll use your mountains as roadside stands. For giving away everything you have. All your things will serve as reparations. For your sins all over the country. You'll lose your gift of land. The inheritance I gave you. I'll make you slaves of your enemies. 
in a far-off and strange land. My anger is hot and blazing and fierce. And no one will put it out. God's message, cursed is the strong one. Who depends on mere humans? Who thinks he can make it on muscle alone? And sets God aside as dead weight. He's like a tumbleweed on the prairie. Out of touch with the good earth. He lives rootless and aimless. In a land where nothing grows. But blessed is the man who trusts me, God. The woman who sticks with God. They're like trees replanted in Eden. Putting down roots near the rivers. Never a worry through the hottest of summers. Never dropping a leaf. Serene and calm through droughts. Bearing fresh fruit every season. The heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful. A puzzle that no one can figure out. But I, God, search the heart. And examine the mind. I get to the heart of the human. I get to the root of things. I treat them as they really are. Not as they pretend to be. Like a cowbird that cheats by laying its eggs. In another bird's nest. Is the person who gets rich by cheating. When the eggs hatch, the deceit is exposed. What a fool he'll look like then. From early on your sanctuary was set high. A throne of glory, exalted. O oh God, you're the hope of Israel. All who leave you end up as fools. Deserters with nothing to show for their lives. Who walk off from God, fountain of living waters. And wind up dead. God, pick up the pieces. Put me back together again. You are my praise. Listen to how they talk about me. So where's this word of God? We'd like to see something happen. But it wasn't my idea to call for doomsday. I never wanted trouble. You know what I've said. It's all out in the open before you. Don't add to my troubles. Give me some relief. Let those who harass me be harassed, not me. Let them be disgraced, not me. Bring down upon them the day of doom. Lower the boom. Boom. God's message to me, go stand in the people's gate, the one used by Judah's kings as they come and go, and then proceed in turn to all the gates of Jerusalem. Tell them, listen, you kings of Judah, listen to God's message and all you people who go in and out of these gates, you listen. This is God's message. Be careful, if you care about your lives, not to desecrate the Sabbath by turning it into just another workday, lugging stuff here and there. Don't use the Sabbath to do business as usual. Keep the Sabbath day holy, as I commanded your ancestors. They never did it, as you know. They paid no attention to what I said and went about their own business, refusing to be guided or instructed by me. But now, take seriously what I tell you. Quit desecrating the Sabbath by busily going about your own work, and keep the Sabbath day holy by not doing business as usual. Then kings from the time of David and their officials will continue to ride through these gates on horses or in chariots. The people of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem will continue to pass through them, too. Jerusalem will always be filled with people. People will stream in from all over Judah, from the province of Benjamin, from the Jerusalem suburbs, from foothills and mountains and deserts. They'll come to worship, bringing all kinds of offerings, animals, grains, incense, expressions of thanks, into the sanctuary of God. But if you won't listen to me, won't keep the Sabbath holy, 
won't quit using the Sabbath for doing your own work, busily going in and out of the city gates on your self-important business, then I'll burn the gates down. In fact, I'll burn the whole city down, palaces and all, with a fire nobody will be able to put out. God told Jeremiah, up on your feet. Go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll tell you what I have to say. So I went to the potter's house, and sure enough, the potter was there, working away at his wheel. Whenever the pot the potter was working on turned out badly, as sometimes happens when you are working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. Then God's message came to me, can't I do just as this potter does, people of Israel? God's decree. Watch this potter. In the same way that this potter works his clay, I work on you, people of Israel. At any moment I may decide to pull up a people or a country by the roots and get rid of them. But if they repent of their wicked lives, I will think twice and start over with them. At another time I might decide to plant a people or country, but if they don't cooperate and won't listen to me, I will think again and give up on the plans I had for them. So, tell the people of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem my message, danger. I'm shaping doom against you, laying plans against you. Turn back from your doomed way of life. Straighten out your lives. But they'll just say, why should we? What's the point? We'll live just the way we've always lived, doom or no doom. God's message, ask around. Survey the godless nations. Has anyone heard the likes of this? Virgin Israel has become a slut. Does snow disappear from the Lebanon peaks? Do alpine streams run dry? But my people have left me. To worship the big lie. They've gotten off the track. The old, well-worn trail. And now bushwhack through underbrush. In a tangle of roots and vines. Their land's going to end up a mess. A fool's memorial to be spit on. Travelers passing through. Will shake their heads in disbelief. I'll scatter my people before their enemies. Like autumn leaves in a high wind. On their day of doom, they'll stare at my back as I walk away. Catching not so much as a glimpse of my face. Some of the people said, come on, let's cook up a plot against Jeremiah. We'll still have the priests to teach us the law, wise counselors to give us advice, and prophets to tell us what God has to say. Come on, let's discredit him so we don't have to put up with him any longer. And I said to God, God, listen to me. Just listen to what my enemies are saying. Should I get paid evil for good? That's what they're doing. They've made plans to kill me. Remember all the times I stood up for them before you. Speaking up for them. Trying to soften your anger. But enough. Let their children starve. Let them be massacred in battle. Let their wives be childless and widowed. Their friends die and their proud young men be killed. Let cries of panic sound from their homes. As you surprise them with war parties. They're all set to lynch me. The noose is practically around my neck. But you know all this, God. You know they're determined to kill me. Don't whitewash their crimes. Don't overlook a single sin. Round the bunch of them up before you. Strike while the iron of your anger is hot. God said to me, Go, buy a clay pot. Then get a few leaders from the people and a few of the leading priests and go out to the valley of Ben Hinnom, just outside the potsherd gate, and preach there what I tell you. 
Say, listen to God's word, you kings of Judah and people of Jerusalem. This is the message from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel. I'm about to bring doom crashing down on this place. Oh, and will ears ever ring? Doom, because they've walked off and left me, and made this place strange by worshipping strange gods, gods never heard of by them, their parents, or the old kings of Judah. Doom, because they have massacred innocent people. Doom, because they've built altars to that no-god Baal, and burned their own children alive in the fire as offerings to Baal, an atrocity I never ordered, never so much as hinted at. And so it's payday, and soon, God's decree, this place will no longer be known as Topheth or Valley of Ben Hinnom, but Massacre Meadows. I'm cancelling all the plans Judah and Jerusalem had for this place, and I'll have them killed by their enemies. I'll stack their dead bodies to be eaten by carrion crows and wild dogs. I'll turn this city into such a museum of atrocities that anyone coming near will be shocked speechless by the savage brutality. The people will turn into cannibals. Dehumanized by the pressure of the enemy siege, they'll eat their own children. Yes, they'll eat one another, family and friends alike. Say all this, and then smash the pot in front of the men who have come with you. Then say, this is what God of the angel armies says, I'll smash this people and this city like a man who smashes a clay pot into so many pieces it can never be put together again. They'll bury bodies here in Topheth until there's no more room. And the whole city will become a Topheth. The city will be turned by people and kings alike into a center for worshipping the star gods and goddesses, turned into an open grave, the whole city an open grave, stinking like a sewer, like Topheth. Then Jeremiah left Topheth, where God had sent him to preach the sermon, and took his stand in the court of God's temple and said to the people, This is the message from God of the angel armies to you, warning. Danger. I'm bringing down on this city and all the surrounding towns the doom that I have pronounced. They're set in their ways and won't budge. They refuse to do a thing I say. The priest Pasher son of Immer was the senior priest in God's temple. He heard Jeremiah preach this sermon. He whipped Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks at the upper Benjamin gate of God's temple. The next day Pasher came and let him go. Jeremiah told him, God has a new name for you, not Pasher but danger everywhere, because God says, you're a danger to yourself and everyone around you. All your friends are going to get killed in battle while you stand there and watch. What's more, I'm turning all of Judah over to the king of Babylon to do whatever he likes with them, haul them off into exile, kill them at whim. Everything worth anything in this city, property and possessions along with everything in the royal treasury, I'm handing it all over to the enemy. They'll rummage through it and take what they want back to Babylon. And you, Pasher, you and everyone in your family will be taken prisoner into exile, that's right, exile in Babylon. You'll die and be buried there, you and all your cronies to whom you preached your lies. You pushed me into this, God, and I let you do it. You were too much for me. And now I'm a public joke. They all poke fun at me. Every time I open my mouth. I'm shouting, murder, or, rape. And all I get for my God warnings. Are insults and contempt. But if I say, forget it. No more God messages from me. The words are fire in my belly. A burning in my bones. I'm worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it any longer. Then I hear whispering behind my back. There goes old danger everywhere. 
Shut him up. Report him. Old friends watch, hoping I'll fall flat on my face. One misstep and we'll have him. We'll get rid of him for good. But God, a most fierce warrior, is at my side. Those who are after me will be sent sprawling. Slapstick buffoons falling all over themselves. A spectacle of humiliation no one will ever forget. Oh, God of the angel armies, no one fools you. You see through everyone, everything. I want to see you pay them back for what they've done. I rest my case with you. Sing to God. All praise to God. He saves the weak from the grip of the wicked. Curse the day. I was born. The day my mother bore me. A curse on it, I say. And curse the man who delivered. The news to my father. You've got a new baby, a boy baby. How happy it made him. Let that birth notice be blacked out. Deleted from the records. And the man who brought it haunted to his death. With the bad news he brought. He should have killed me before I was born. With that womb as my tomb. My mother pregnant for the rest of her life. With a baby dead in her womb. Why, oh why, did I ever leave that womb? Life's been nothing but trouble and tears. And what's coming is more of the same. God's message to Jeremiah when King Zedekiah sent Pasher son of Malkijah and the priest Zephaniah son of Messiah to him with this request, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has waged war against us. Pray to God for us. Ask him for help. Maybe God will intervene with one of his famous miracles and make him leave. But Jeremiah said, tell Zedekiah, this is the God of Israel's message to you, you can say goodbye to your army, watch morale and weapons flush down the drain. I'm going to personally lead the king of Babylon and the Chaldeans, against whom you're fighting so hard, right into the city itself. I'm joining their side and fighting against you, fighting all out, holding nothing back. And in fierce anger. I'm prepared to wipe out the population of this city, people and animals alike, in a raging epidemic. And then I will personally deliver Zedekiah king of Judah, his princes, and any survivors left in the city who haven't died from disease, been killed, or starved. I'll deliver them to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, yes, hand them over to their enemies, who have come to kill them. He'll kill them ruthlessly, showing no mercy. And then tell the people at large, God's message to you is this, listen carefully. I'm giving you a choice, life or death. Whoever stays in this city will die either in battle or by starvation or disease. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Chaldeans who have surrounded the city will live. You'll lose everything, but not your life. I'm determined to see this city destroyed. I'm that angry with this place. God's decree. I'm going to give it to the king of Babylon, and he's going to burn it to the ground. To the royal house of Judah, listen to God's message. House of David, listen, God's message to you. Start each day by dealing with justice. Rescue victims from their exploiters. Prevent fire, the fire of my anger. For once it starts, it can't be put out. Your evil regime is fuel for my anger. Don't you realize that I'm against you? Yes, against you. You think you've got it made. All snug and secure. You say, who can possibly get to us? Who can crash our party? Well, I can, and will. 
I'll punish your evil regime. I'll start a fire that will rage unchecked. Burn everything in sight to cinders. God's orders, go to the royal palace and deliver this message. Say, listen to what God says, O King of Judah, you who sit on David's throne, you and your officials and all the people who go in and out of these palace gates. This is God's message, attend to matters of justice. Set things right between people. Rescue victims from their exploiters. Don't take advantage of the homeless, the orphans, the widows. Stop the murdering. If you obey these commands, then kings who follow in the line of David will continue to go in and out of these palace gates mounted on horses and riding in chariots, they and their officials and the citizens of Judah. But if you don't obey these commands, then I swear, God's decree, this palace will end up a heap of rubble. This is God's verdict on Judah's royal palace, I number you among my favorite places. Like the lovely hills of Gilead. Like the soaring peaks of Lebanon. Yet I swear I'll turn you into a wasteland. As empty as a ghost town. I'll hire a demolition crew. Well equipped with sledgehammers and wrecking bars. Pound the country to a pulp and burn it all up. Travelers from all over will come through here and say to one another, why would God do such a thing to this wonderful city? They'll be told, because they walked out on the covenant of their God, took up with other gods and worshipped them. Don't weep over dead King Josiah. Don't waste your tears. Weep for his exiled son. He's gone for good he'll never see home again. For this is God's word on Shalom son of Josiah, who succeeded his father as king of Judah, he's gone from here, gone for good. He'll die in the place they've taken him to. He'll never see home again. Doomed to him who builds palaces but bullies people. Who makes a fine house but destroys lives. Who cheats his workers and won't pay them for their work. Who says, I'll build me an elaborate mansion, with spacious rooms and fancy windows. I'll bring in rare and expensive woods, and the latest in interior decor. So, that makes you a king, living in a fancy palace. Your father got along just fine, didn't he? He did what was right and treated people fairly. And things went well with him. He stuck up for the down and out. And things went well for Judah. Isn't this what it means to know me? God's decree. But you're blind and brainless. All you think about is yourself. Taking advantage of the weak. Bulldozing your way, bullying victims. This is God's epitaph on Jehoiakim son of Josiah king of Judah. Doomed to this man. Nobody will shed tears over him. Poor, poor brother. Nobody will shed tears over him. Poor, poor master. They'll give him a donkey's funeral. Drag him out of the city and dump him. People of Jerusalem, Climb a Lebanon peak and weep. Climb a Bashan mountain and wail. Climb the Abram ridge and cry. You've made a total mess of your life. I spoke to you when everything was going your way. You said, I'm not interested. You've been that way as long as I've known you. Never listen to a thing I said. All your leaders will be blown away. All your friends end up in exile. And you'll find yourself in the gutter. Disgraced by your evil life. You big city people thought you were so important. Thought you were, king of the mountain. You're soon going to be doubled up in pain. 
pain worse than the pangs of childbirth. As sure as I am the living God, God's decree, even if you, Jehoiakim son of Jehoiakim king of Judah, were the signet ring on my right hand, I'd pull you off and give you to those who are out to kill you, to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and the Chaldeans, and then throw you, both you and your mother, into a foreign country, far from your place of birth. There you'll both die. You'll be homesick, desperately homesick, but you'll never get home again. Is Jehoiakim a leaky bucket? A rusted out pail good for nothing? Why else would he be thrown away, he and his children? Thrown away to a foreign place? O oh land, land, land! Listen to God's message. This is God's verdict. Write this man off as if he were childless. A man who will never amount to anything. Nothing will ever come of his life. He's the end of the line, the last of the kings. Doomed to the shepherd leaders who butcher and scatter my sheep. God's decree. So here is what I, God, Israel's God, say to the shepherd leaders who misled my people, you've scattered my sheep. You've driven them off. You haven't kept your eye on them. Well, let me tell you, I'm keeping my eye on you, keeping track of your criminal behavior. I'll take over and gather what's left of my sheep, gather them in from all the lands where I've driven them. I'll bring them back where they belong, and they'll recover and flourish. I'll set shepherd leaders over them who will take good care of them. They won't live in fear or panic anymore. All the lost sheep rounded up. God's decree. Time's coming, God's decree. When I'll establish a truly righteous David branch. A ruler who knows how to rule justly. He'll make sure of justice and keep people united. In his time Judah will be secure again. And Israel will live in safety. This is the name they'll give him. God who puts everything right. So watch for this. The time's coming, God's decree, when no one will say, as sure as God lives, the God who brought the Israelites out of Egypt, but, as sure as God lives, the God who brought the descendants of Israel back from the north country and from the other countries where he'd driven them, so that they can live on their own good earth. My head is reeling. My limbs are limp. I'm staggering like a drunk. Seeing double from too much wine. And all because of God. Because of his holy words. Now for what God says regarding the lying prophets, can you believe it? A country teeming with adulterers. Faithless, promiscuous idolater adulterers. They're a curse on the land. The land's a wasteland. Their unfaithfulness is turning the country into a cesspool. Prophets and priests devoted to desecration. They have nothing to do with me as their God. My very own temple, mind you. Mud spattered with their crimes. God's decree. But they won't get by with it. They'll find themselves on a slippery slope, careening into the darkness, somersaulting into the pitch-black dark. I'll make them pay for their crimes. It will be the year of doom. God's decree. Over in Samaria I saw prophets, acting like silly fools, shocking. They preached using that no-god ball for a text. Messing with the minds of my people. And the Jerusalem prophets are even worse, horrible. Sex-driven, living a lie. Subsidizing a culture of wickedness. And never giving it a second thought. They're as bad as those wretches in old Sodom. The degenerates of old Gomorrah. 
So here's the message to the prophets from God of the angel armies, I'll cook them a supper of maggoty meat. With after dinner drinks of strychnine. The Jerusalem prophets are behind all this. They're the cause of the godlessness polluting this country. A message from God of the angel armies, don't listen to the sermons of the prophets. It's all hot air. Lies, lies, and more lies. They make it all up. Not a word they speak comes from me. They preach there, everything will turn out fine, sermon. To congregations with no taste for God. There, nothing bad will ever happen to you, sermon. To people who are set in their own ways. Have any of these prophets bothered to meet with me, the true God? Bothered to take in what I have to say? Listen to and then lived out my word. Look out. God's hurricane will be let loose. My hurricane blast. Spinning the heads of the wicked like tops. God's raging anger won't let up. Until I've made a clean sweep. Completing the job I began. When the job's done. You'll see that it's been well done. I never sent these prophets. But they ran anyway. I never spoke to them. But they preached away. If they'd have bothered to sit down and meet with me. They'd have preached my message to my people. They'd have gotten them back on the right track. Gotten them out of their evil ruts. Am I not a God near at hand, God's decree? And not a God far off? Can anyone hide out in a corner? Where I can't see him? God's decree. Am I not present everywhere? Whether seen or unseen? God's decree. I know what they're saying, all these prophets who preach lies using me as their text, saying, I had this dream. I had this dream. How long do I have to put up with this? Do these prophets give two cents about me as they preach their lies and spew out their grandiose delusions? They swap dreams with one another, feed on each other's delusive dreams, trying to distract my people from me just as their ancestors were distracted by the no-god ball. You prophets who do nothing but dream. Go ahead and tell your silly dreams. But you prophets who have a message from me. Tell it truly and faithfully. What does straw have in common with wheat? Nothing else is like God's decree. Isn't my message like fire? God's decree. Isn't it like a sledgehammer busting a rock? I've had it with the prophets who get all their sermons secondhand from each other. Yes, I've had it with them. They make up stuff and then pretend it's a real sermon. Oh yes, I've had it with the prophets who preach the lies they dream up, spreading them all over the country, ruining the lives of my people with their cheap and reckless lies, I never sent these prophets, never authorized a single one of them. They do nothing for this people, nothing. God's decree. And anyone, including prophets and priests, who asks, what's God got to say about all this, what's troubling him, tell him, you, you're the trouble, and I'm getting rid of you. God's decree. And if anyone, including prophets and priests, goes around saying glibly, God's message. God's message. I'll punish him and his family. Instead of claiming to know what God says, ask questions of one another, such as, how do we understand God in this? But don't go around pretending to know it all, saying, God told me this. God told me that. I don't want to hear it anymore. Only the person I authorize speaks for me. Otherwise, my message gets twisted, the message of the living God of the angel armies. You can ask the prophets, how did God answer you? 
what did he tell you? But don't pretend that you know all the answers yourselves and talk like you know it all. I'm telling you, quit that God told me this. God told me that, kind of talk. Are you paying attention? You'd better, because I'm about to take you in hand and throw you to the ground, you and this entire city that I gave to your ancestors. I've had it with the lot of you. You're never going to live this down. You're going down in history as a disgrace. God showed me two baskets of figs placed in front of the temple of God. This was after Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had taken Jehoiakim son of Jehoiakim king of Judah from Jerusalem into exile in Babylon, along with the leaders of Judah, the craftsmen, and the skilled laborers. In one basket the figs were of the finest quality, ripe and ready to eat. In the other basket the figs were rotten, so rotten they couldn't be eaten. God said to me, Jeremiah, what do you see? Figs, I said. Excellent figs of the finest quality, and also rotten figs, so rotten they can't be eaten. Then God told me, this is the message from the God of Israel, the exiles from here that I've sent off to the land of the Babylonians are like the good figs, and I'll make sure they get good treatment. I'll keep my eye on them so that their lives are good, and I'll bring them back to this land. I'll build them up, not tear them down, I'll plant them, not uproot them. And I'll give them a heart to know me, God. They'll be my people and I'll be their God, for they'll have returned to me with all their hearts. But like the rotten figs, so rotten they can't be eaten, is Zedekiah king of Judah. Rotten figs, that's how I'll treat him and his leaders, along with the survivors here and those down in Egypt. I'll make them something that the whole world will look on as disgusting, repugnant outcasts, their names used as curse words wherever in the world I drive them. And I'll make sure they die like flies, from war, starvation, disease, whatever, until the land I once gave to them and their ancestors is completely rid of them. This is the message given to Jeremiah for all the people of Judah. It came in the fourth year of Jehoiakim son of Josiah king of Judah. It was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. Jeremiah the prophet delivered the message to all the people of Judah and citizens of Jerusalem. From the thirteenth year of Josiah son of Ammon king of Judah right up to the present day, twenty-three years it's been, God's word has come to me, and from early each morning to late every night I've passed it on to you. And you haven't listened to a word of it. Not only that but God also sent a steady stream of prophets to you who were just as persistent as me, and you never listened. They told you, turn back, right now, each one of you, from your evil way of life and bad behavior, and live in the land God gave you and your ancestors, the land he intended to give you forever. Don't follow the God fads of the day, taking up and worshipping these no gods. Don't make me angry with your God businesses, making and selling gods, a dangerous business. You refuse to listen to any of this, and now I am really angry. These God-making businesses of yours are your doom. The verdict of God of the angel armies on all this, because you have refused to listen to what I've said, I'm stepping in. I'm sending for the armies out of the north headed by Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, my servant in this, and I'm setting them on this land and people and even the surrounding countries. I'm devoting the whole works to total destruction, a horror to top all the horrors in history. And I'll banish every sound of joy, singing, laughter, marriage festivities, genial workmen, candlelit suppers. The whole landscape will be one vast wasteland. These countries will be in subjection to the king of Babylon for 70 years. Once the 70 years is up, 
I'll punish the king of Babylon and the whole nation of Babylon for their sin. Then there'll be the wasteland. Everything that I said I'd do to that country, I'll do, everything that's written in this book, everything Jeremiah preached against all the godless nations. Many nations and great kings will make slaves of the Babylonians, paying them back for everything they've done to others. They won't get by with anything. God's Decree This is a message that the God of Israel gave me, Take this cup filled with the wine of my wrath that I'm handing to you. Make all the nations where I send you drink it down. They'll drink it and get drunk, staggering in delirium because of the killing that I'm going to unleash among them. I took the cup from God's hand and made them drink it, all the nations to which he sent me, Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, along with their kings and leaders, turning them into a vast wasteland, a horror to look at, a cuss word, which, in fact, they now are, Pharaoh king of Egypt with his attendants and leaders, plus all his people and the melting pot of foreigners collected there, all the kings of Uz, all the kings of the Philistines from Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and what's left of Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and the Ammonites, all the kings of Tyre, Sidon, and the coastlands across the sea, Dedan, Tima, Buzz, and the nomads on the fringe of the desert, all the kings of Arabia and the various Bedouin sheiks and chieftains wandering about in the desert, all the kings of Zimri, Elam, and the Medes, all the kings from the north countries near and far, one by one, all the kingdoms on planet earth. And the king of Shashak, that is, Babylon, will be the last to drink. Tell them, these are orders from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, drink and get drunk and vomit. Fall on your faces and don't get up again. You're slated for a massacre. If any of them refuse to take the cup from you and drink it, say to them, God of the angel armies has ordered you to drink. So drink. Prepare for the worst. I'm starting off the catastrophe in the city that I claim as my own, so don't think you are going to get out of it. No, you're not getting out of anything. It's the sword and nothing but the sword against everyone everywhere. The God of the Angel Armies Decree Preach it all, Jeremiah. Preach the entire message to them. Say, God roars like a lion from high heaven. Thunder rolls out from his holy dwelling. Ear-splitting bellows against his people. Shouting hurrahs like workers in harvest. The noise reverberates all over the earth. Everyone everywhere hears it. God makes his case against the godless nations. He's about to put the human race on trial. For the wicked the verdict is clear-cut. Death by the Sword God's Decree A message from God of the Angel Armies, prepare for the worst. Doomsday Disaster is spreading from nation to nation. A huge storm is about to rage. All across planet Earth. Laid end to end, those killed in God's judgment that day will stretch from one end of the Earth to the other. No tears will be shed and no burials conducted. The bodies will be left where they fall, like so much horse dung fertilizing the fields. Wail, shepherds. Cry out for help. Grovel in the dirt, you masters of flocks. Time's up, you're slated for the slaughterhouse. Like a choice ram with its throat cut. There's no way out for the rulers. No escape for those shepherds. Hear that? Rulers crying for help. Shepherds of the flock wailing. God is about to ravage their fine pastures. The peaceful sheepfolds will be silent with death. Silenced by God's deadly anger. God will come out into the open. 
like a lion leaping from its cover. And the country will be torn to pieces, ripped and ravaged by his anger. At the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim son of Josiah king of Judah, this message came from God to Jeremiah. God's message, stand in the court of God's temple and preach to the people who come from all over Judah to worship in God's temple. Say everything I tell you to say to them. Don't hold anything back. Just maybe they'll listen and turn back from their bad lives. Then I'll reconsider the disaster that I'm planning to bring on them because of their evil behavior. Say to them, this is God's message, if you refuse to listen to me and live by my teaching that I've revealed so plainly to you, and if you continue to refuse to listen to my servants the prophets that I tirelessly keep on sending to you, but you've never listened. Why would you start now, then I'll make this temple a pile of ruins like Shiloh, and I'll make this city nothing but a bad joke worldwide. Everybody there, priests, prophets, and people, heard Jeremiah preaching this message in the temple of God. When Jeremiah had finished his sermon, saying everything God had commanded him to say, the priests and prophets and people all grabbed him, yelling, Death! You're going to die for this. How dare you preach, and using God's name, saying that this temple will become a heap of rubble like Shiloh and this city be wiped out without a soul left in it. All the people mobbed Jeremiah right in the temple itself. Officials from the royal court of Judah were told of this. They left the palace immediately and came to God's temple to investigate. They held court on the spot, at the new gate entrance to God's temple. The prophets and priests spoke first, addressing the officials, but also the people, death to this man. He deserves nothing less than death. He has preached against this city, you've heard the evidence with your own ears. Jeremiah spoke next, publicly addressing the officials before the crowd, God sent me to preach against both this temple and city everything that's been reported to you. So do something about it. Change the way you're living, change your behavior. Listen obediently to the message of your God. Maybe God will reconsider the disaster he has threatened. As for me, I'm at your mercy, do whatever you think is best. But take warning, if you kill me, you're killing an innocent man, and you and the city and the people in it will be liable. I didn't say any of this on my own. God sent me and told me what to say. You've been listening to God speak, not Jeremiah. The court officials, backed by the people, then handed down their ruling to the priests and prophets, acquittal. No death sentence for this man. He has spoken to us with the authority of our God. Then some of the respected leaders stood up and addressed the crowd, in the reign of Hezekiah king of Judah, Micah of Morsheth preached to the people of Judah this sermon, This is God of the angel army's message for you because of people like you. Zion will be turned back into farmland. Jerusalem end up as a pile of rubble and instead of the temple on the mountain. A few scraggly scrub pines. Did King Hezekiah or anyone else in Judah kill Micah of Morsheth because of that sermon? Didn't Hezekiah honor him and pray for mercy from God? And then didn't God call off the disaster he had threatened? Friends, we're at the brink of bringing a terrible calamity upon ourselves. At another time there had been a man, Uriah son of Shemaiah from Kiriath Jerim, who had preached similarly in the name of God. He preached against this same city and country just as Jeremiah did. When King Jehoiakim and his royal court heard his sermon, they determined to kill him. Uriah, afraid for his life, went into hiding in Egypt. King Jehoiakim sent Elnathan son of Achbor with a posse of men after him. 
they brought him back from Egypt and presented him to the king. And the king had him killed. They dumped his body unceremoniously outside the city. But in Jeremiah's case, Ahikam's son of Shaphan stepped forward and took his side, preventing the mob from lynching him. Early in the reign of Zedekiah son of Josiah king of Judah, Jeremiah received this message from God, Make a harness and a yoke and then harness yourself up. Send a message to the kings of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Sidon. Send it through their ambassadors who have come to Jerusalem to see Zedekiah king of Judah. Give them this charge to take back to their masters, this is a message from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel. Tell your masters. I'm the one who made the earth, man and woman, and all the animals in the world. I did it on my own without asking anyone's help and I hand it out to whomever I will. Here and now I give all these lands over to my servant Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. I have made even the wild animals subject to him. All nations will be under him, then his son, and then his grandson. Then his country's time will be up and the tables will be turned, Babylon will be the underdog servant. But until then, any nation or kingdom that won't submit to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon must take the yoke of the king of Babylon and harness up. I'll punish that nation with war and starvation and disease until I've got them where I want them. So don't for a minute listen to all your prophets and spiritualists and fortune-tellers, who claim to know the future and who tell you not to give in to the king of Babylon. They're handing you a line of lies, bare-faced lies, that will end up putting you in exile far from home. I myself will drive you out of your lands, and that'll be the end of you. But the nation that accepts the yoke of the king of Babylon and does what he says, I'll let that nation stay right where it is, minding its own business. Then I gave this same message to Zedekiah king of Judah, harness yourself up to the yoke of the king of Babylon. Serve him and his people. Live a long life. Why choose to get killed or starve to death or get sick and die, which is what God has threatened to any nation that won't throw its lot in with Babylon? Don't listen to the prophets who are telling you not to submit to the king of Babylon. They're telling you lies, preaching lies. God's word on this is, I didn't send those prophets, but they keep preaching lies, claiming I sent them. If you listen to them, I'll end up driving you out of here and that will be the end of you, both you and the lying prophets. And finally I spoke to the priests and the people at large, this is God's message, don't listen to the preaching of the prophets who keep telling you, trust us, the furnishings, plundered from God's temple, are going to be returned from Babylon any day now. That's a lie. Don't listen to them. Submit to the king of Babylon and live a long life. Why do something that will destroy this city and leave it a heap of rubble? If they are real prophets and have a message from God, let them come to God of the angel armies in prayer so that the furnishings that are still left in God's temple, the king's palace, and Jerusalem aren't also lost to Babylon. That's because God of the angel armies has already spoken about the temple furnishings that remain, the pillars, the great bronze basin, the stands, and all the other bowls and chalices that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon didn't take when he took Jehoiakim son of Jehoiakim off to Babylonian exile along with all the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem. He said that the furnishings left behind in the temple of God and in the royal palace and in Jerusalem will be taken off to Babylon and stay there until, in God's words, I take the matter up again and bring them back where they belong. Later that same year, it was in the fifth month of King Zedekiah's fourth year, Hananiah son of Azar, a prophet from Gibeon, confronted Jeremiah in the temple of God in front of the priests and all the people who were there. 
Hananiah said. This message is straight from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, I will most certainly break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Before two years are out I'll have all the furnishings of God's temple back here, all the things that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon plundered and hauled off to Babylon. I'll also bring back Jehoiakim son of Jehoiakim king of Judah and all the exiles who were taken off to Babylon. God's Decree Yes, I will break the king of Babylon's yoke. You'll no longer be in harness to him. Prophet Jeremiah stood up to Prophet Hananiah in front of the priests and all the people who were in God's temple that day. Prophet Jeremiah said, Wonderful! Would that it were true, that God would validate your preaching by bringing the temple furnishings and all the exiles back from Babylon. But listen to me, listen closely. Listen to what I tell both you and all the people here today, the old prophets, the ones before our time, preached judgment against many countries and kingdoms, warning of war and disaster and plague. So any prophet who preaches that everything is just fine and there's nothing to worry about stands out like a sore thumb. We'll wait and see. If it happens, it happens, and then we'll know that God sent him. At that, Hananiah grabbed the yoke from Jeremiah's shoulders and smashed it. And then he addressed the people, This is God's message. In just this way I will smash the yoke of the king of Babylon and get him off the neck of all the nations, and within two years. Jeremiah walked out. Later, sometime after Hananiah had smashed the yoke from off his shoulders, Jeremiah received this message from God, Go back to Hananiah and tell him, This is God's message, You smashed the wooden yoke bars, Now you've got iron yoke bars. This is a message from God of the angel armies, Israel's own God, I've put an iron yoke on all these nations. They're harnessed to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. They'll do just what he tells them. Why, I'm even putting him in charge of the wild animals. So prophet Jeremiah told prophet Hananiah, Hold it, Hananiah. God never sent you. You've talked the whole country into believing a pack of lies. And so God says, you claim to be sent. I'll send you all right, right off the face of the earth. Before the year is out, you'll be dead because you instigated sedition against God. Prophet Hananiah died that very year, in the seventh month. This is the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to what was left of the elders among the exiles, to the priests and prophets and all the exiles whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken to Babylon from Jerusalem, including King Jehoiakim, the queen mother, the government leaders, and all the skilled laborers and craftsmen. The letter was carried by Elasa son of Shaphan and Jemariah son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah king of Judah had sent to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. The letter said, This is the message from God of the angel armies, Israel's God, to all the exiles I've taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and make yourselves at home, put in gardens and eat what grows in that country. Marry and have children. Encourage your children to marry and have children so that you'll thrive in that country and not waste away. Make yourselves at home there and work for the country's welfare, pray for Babylon's well-being. If things go well for Babylon, things will go well for you. Yes. Believe it or not, this is the message from God of the angel armies, Israel's God, don't let all those so-called preachers and know-it-alls who are all over the place there take you in with their lies. Don't pay any attention to the fantasies they keep coming up with to please you. They're a bunch of liars preaching lies, and claiming I sent them. I never sent them, believe me. God's Decree This is God's word on the subject 
as soon as Babylon's seventy years are up and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out, plans to take care of you, not abandon you, plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me, yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree, I'll turn things around for you. I'll bring you back from all the countries into which I drove you, God's decree, bring you home to the place from which I sent you off into exile. You can count on it. But for right now, because you've taken up with these newfangled prophets who set themselves up as Babylonian specialists, spreading the word God sent them just for us. God is setting the record straight, as for the king still sitting on David's throne and all the people left in Jerusalem who didn't go into exile with you, they're facing bad times. God of the angel armies says, watch this. Catastrophe is on the way, war, hunger, disease. They're a barrel of rotten apples. I'll rid the country of them through war and hunger and disease. The whole world is going to hold its nose at the smell, shut its eyes at the horrible sight. They'll end up in slum ghettos because they wouldn't listen to a thing I said when I sent my servant prophets preaching tirelessly and urgently. No, they wouldn't listen to a word I said. God's decree. And you, you exiles whom I sent out of Jerusalem to Babylon, listen to God's message to you. As far as Ahab son of Kaliah and Zedekiah son of Messiah are concerned, the Babylonian specialists who are preaching lies in my name, I will turn them over to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, who will kill them while you watch. The exiles from Judah will take what they see at the execution and use it as a curse, God fry you to a crisp like the king of Babylon fried Zedekiah and Ahab in the fire. Those two men, sex predators and prophet impostors, got what they deserved. They pulled every woman they got their hands on into bed, their neighbors' wives, no less, and preached lies claiming it was my message. I never sent those men. I've never had anything to do with them. God's decree, they won't get away with a thing. I've witnessed it all. And this is the message for Shemaiah the Nehilamite, God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, You took it on yourself to send letters to all the people in Jerusalem and to the priest Zephaniah son of Messiah and the company of priests. In your letter you told Zephaniah that God set you up as priest replacing priest Jehoiada. He's put you in charge of God's temple and made you responsible for locking up any crazy fellow off the street who takes it into his head to be a prophet. So why haven't you done anything about muzzling Jeremiah of Anathoth, who's going around posing as a prophet? He's gone so far as to write to us in Babylon, it's going to be a long exile, so build houses and make yourselves at home. Plant gardens and prepare Babylonian recipes. The priest Zephaniah read that letter to the prophet Jeremiah. Then God told Jeremiah, send this message to the exiles. Tell them what God says about Shemaiah the Nehilamite, Shemaiah is preaching lies to you. I didn't send him. He is seducing you into believing lies. So this is God's verdict, I will punish Shemaiah the Nehilamite and his whole family. He's going to end up with nothing and no one. No one from his family will be around to see any of the good that I am going to do for my people because he has preached rebellion against me. God's Decree This is the message Jeremiah received from God, God's message, the God of Israel, write everything I tell you in a book. Look. The time is coming when I will turn everything around for my people, both Israel and Judah. 
I, God, say so. I'll bring them back to the land I gave their ancestors, and they'll take up ownership again. This is the way God put it to Israel and Judah. God's message, cries of panic are being heard. The peace has been shattered. Ask around. Look around. Can men bear babies? So why do I see all these he-men? Holding their bellies like women in labor. Faces contorted. Pale as death. The blackest of days. No day like it ever. A time of deep trouble for Jacob. But he'll come out of it alive. And then I'll enter the darkness. I'll break the yoke from their necks. Cut them loose from the harness. No more slave labor to foreigners. They'll serve their God. And the David king I'll establish for them. So fear no more, Jacob, dear servant. Don't despair, Israel. Look up. I'll save you out of faraway places. I'll bring your children back from exile. Jacob will come back and find life good. Safe and secure. I'll be with you. I'll save you. I'll finish off all the godless nations. Among which I've scattered you. But I won't finish you off. I'll punish you, but fairly. I won't send you off with just a slap on the wrist. This is God's message, you're a burned out case. As good as dead. Everyone has given up on you. You're hopeless. All your fair weather friends have skipped town. Without giving you a second thought. But I delivered the knockout blow. A punishment you will never forget. Because of the enormity of your guilt. The endless list of your sins. So why all this self-pity, licking your wounds? You deserve all this, and more. Because of the enormity of your guilt. The endless list of your sins. I've done all this to you. Everyone who hurt you will be hurt. Your enemies will end up as slaves. Your plunderers will be plundered. Your looters will become loot. As for you, I'll come with healing. Curing the incurable. Because they all gave up on you. And dismissed you as hopeless. That good-for-nothing Zion. Again, God's message, I'll turn things around for Jacob. I'll compassionately come in and rebuild homes. The town will be rebuilt on its old foundations. The mansions will be splendid again. Thanksgivings will pour out of the windows. Laughter will spill through the doors. Things will get better and better. Depression days are over. They'll thrive, they'll flourish. The days of contempt will be over. They'll look forward to having children again. To being a community in which I take pride. I'll punish anyone who hurts them. And their prince will come from their own ranks. One of their own people shall be their leader. Their ruler will come from their own ranks. I'll grant him free and easy access to me. Would anyone dare to do that on his own? To enter my presence uninvited? God's decree. And that's it, you'll be my very own people. I'll be your very own God. Look out. God's hurricane is let loose. His hurricane blast. Spinning the heads of the wicked like dust devils. God's raging anger won't let up. Until he's made a clean sweep. Completing the job he began. When the job's done. You'll see it's been well done. And when that happens, God's decree. It will be plain as the sun at high noon. 
I'll be the God of every man, woman, and child in Israel. And they shall be my very own people. This is the way God put it, they found grace out in the desert. These people who survived the killing. Israel, out looking for a place to rest. Met God out looking for them. God told them, I've never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love, and more love. And so now I'll start over with you and build you up again. Dear Virgin Israel, you'll resume your singing, grabbing tambourines and joining the dance. You'll go back to your old work of planting vineyards on the Samaritan hillsides and sit back and enjoy the fruit. Oh, how you'll enjoy those harvests. The time's coming when watchmen will call out from the hilltops of Ephraim on your feet. Let's go to Zion. Go to meet our God. Oh yes, God says so, shout for joy at the top of your lungs for Jacob. Announce the good news to the number one nation. Raise cheers. Sing praises. Say. God has saved his people. Save the core of Israel. Watch what comes next, I'll bring my people back. From the north country. And gather them up from the ends of the earth. Gather those who've gone blind and those who are lame and limping. Gather pregnant women, even the mothers whose birth pangs have started. Bring them all back, a huge crowd. Watch them come. They'll come weeping for joy. As I take their hands and lead them. Lead them to fresh flowing brooks. Lead them along smooth, uncluttered paths. Yes, it's because I'm Israel's father. And Ephraim's my firstborn son. Hear this, nations. God's message. Broadcast this all over the world. Tell them, the one who scattered Israel. will gather them together again. From now on he'll keep a careful eye on them. Like a shepherd with his flock. I, God, will pay a stiff ransom price for Jacob. I'll free him from the grip of the Babylonian bully. The people will climb up Zion's slope shouting with joy. Their faces beaming because of God's bounty. Grain and wine and oil. Flocks of sheep, herds of cattle. Their lives will be like a well-watered garden. Never again left to dry up. Young women will dance and be happy. Young men and old men will join in. I'll convert their weeping into laughter. Lavishing comfort, invading their grief with joy. I'll make sure that their priests get three square meals a day. And that my people have more than enough. God's decree. Again, God's message, listen to this. Laments coming out of Rama. Wild and bitter weeping. It's Rachel weeping for her children. Rachel refusing all solace. Her children are gone. Gone, long gone into exile. But God says, stop your incessant weeping. Hold back your tears. Collect wages from your grief work. God's decree they'll be coming back home. There's hope for your children. God's decree. I've heard the contrition of Ephraim. Yes, I've heard it clearly, saying. You trained me well. You broke me, a wild yearling horse, to the saddle. Now put me, trained and obedient, to use. You are my God. After those years of running loose, I repented. After you trained me to obedience. I was ashamed of my past, 
my wild, unruly past. Humiliated, I beat on my chest. Will I ever live this down? Oh! Ephraim is my dear, dear son. My child in whom I take pleasure. Every time I mention his name. My heart bursts with longing for him. Everything in me cries out for him. Softly and tenderly I wait for him. God's decree. Set up signposts to mark your trip home. Get a good map. Study the road conditions. The road out is the road back. Come back, dear Virgin Israel. Come back to your hometowns. How long will you flit here and there, indecisive? How long before you make up your fickle mind? God will create a new thing in this land. A transformed woman will embrace the transforming God. A message from Israel's God of the angel armies, when I've turned everything around and brought my people back, the old expressions will be heard on the streets, God bless you. O oh, true home. O oh, holy mountain. All Judah's people, whether in town or country, will get along just fine with each other. I'll refresh tired bodies. I'll restore tired souls. Just then I woke up and looked around, what a pleasant and satisfying sleep. Be ready. The time's coming, God's decree, when I will plant people and animals in Israel and Judah, just as a farmer plants seed. And in the same way that earlier I relentlessly pulled up and tore down, took apart and demolished, so now I am sticking with them as they start over, building and planting. When that time comes you won't hear the old proverb anymore, parents ate the green apples. Their children got the stomachache. No, each person will pay for his own sin. You eat green apples, you're the one who gets sick. That's right. The time is coming when I will make a brand new covenant with Israel and Judah. It won't be a repeat of the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant even though I did my part as their master. God's decree. This is the brand new covenant that I will make with Israel when the time comes. I will put my law within them, write it on their hearts, and be their God. And they will be my people. They will no longer go around setting up schools to teach each other about God. They'll know me firsthand, the dull and the bright, the smart and the slow. I'll wipe the slate clean for each of them. I'll forget they ever sinned. God's decree. God's message from the God who lights up the day with sun and brightens the night with moon and stars who whips the ocean into a billowy froth, whose name is God of the angel armies. If this ordered cosmos ever fell to pieces, fell into chaos before me, God's decree, then and only then might Israel fall apart, and disappear as a nation before me. God's message if the skies could be measured with a yardstick, and the earth explored to its core. Then and only then would I turn my back on Israel. Disgusted with all they've done. God's decree. The time is coming, it's God's decree, when God's city will be rebuilt, rebuilt all the way from the citadel of Hanamel to the corner gate. The master plan will extend west to Garib Hill and then around to Goth. The whole valley to the south where incinerated corpses are dumped, a death valley if there ever was one, and all the terraced fields out to the brook Kidron on the east as far north as the horse gate will be consecrated to me as a holy place, this city will never again be torn down or destroyed. The message Jeremiah received from God in the tenth year of Zedekiah king of Judah. 
It was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time the army of the king of Babylon was holding Jerusalem under siege. Jeremiah was shut up in jail in the royal palace. Zedekiah, king of Judah, had locked him up, complaining, How dare you preach, saying, God says, I'm warning you, I will hand this city over to the king of Babylon and he will take it over. Zedekiah king of Judah will be handed over to the Chaldeans right along with the city. He will be handed over to the king of Babylon and forced to face the music. He'll be hauled off to Babylon where he'll stay until I deal with him. God's Decree Fight against the Babylonians all you want, it won't get you anywhere. Jeremiah said, God's message came to me like this, prepare yourself. Hanamel, your uncle Shalom's son, is on his way to see you. He is going to say, buy my field in Anathoth. You have the legal right to buy it. And sure enough, just as God had said, my cousin Hanamel came to me while I was in jail and said, buy my field in Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin, for you have the legal right to keep it in the family. Buy it. Take it over. That did it. I knew it was God's message. So I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel. I paid him seventeen silver shekels. I followed all the proper procedures, in the presence of witnesses I wrote out the bill of sale, sealed it, and weighed out the money on the scales. Then I took the deed of purchase, the sealed copy that contained the contract and its conditions and also the open copy, and gave them to Baruch son of Neriah, the son of Masiah. All this took place in the presence of my cousin Hanamel and the witnesses who had signed the deed, as the Jews who were at the jail that day looked on. Then, in front of all of them, I told Baruch, These are orders from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, take these documents, both the sealed and the open deeds, and put them for safekeeping in a pottery jar. For God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, life is going to return to normal. Homes and fields and vineyards are again going to be bought in this country. And then, having handed over the legal documents to Baruch son of Neriah, I prayed to God, Dear God, my Master, you created earth and sky by your great power, by merely stretching out your arm. There is nothing you can't do. You're loyal in your steadfast love to thousands upon thousands, but you also make children live with the fallout from their parents' sins. Great and powerful God, named God of the angel armies, determined in purpose and relentless in following through, you see everything that men and women do and respond appropriately to the way they live, to the things they do. You perform signs and wonders in the country of Egypt and continue to do so right into the present, right here in Israel and everywhere else, too. You've made a reputation for yourself that doesn't diminish. You brought your people Israel out of Egypt with signs and wonders, a powerful deliverance, by merely stretching out your arm. You gave them this land and solemnly promised to their ancestors a bountiful and fertile land. But when they entered the land and took it over, they didn't listen to you. They didn't do what you commanded. They wouldn't listen to a thing you told them. And so you brought this disaster on them. Oh, look at the siege ramps already set in place to take the city. Killing and starvation and disease are on our doorstep. The Babylonians are attacking. The word you spoke is coming to pass, it's daily news. And yet you, God, the Master, even though it is certain that the city will be turned over to the Babylonians, also told me, by the field. Pay for it in cash. And make sure there are witnesses. Then God's message came again to Jeremiah, Stay alert. 
I am God, the God of everything living. Is there anything I can't do? So listen to God's message, no doubt about it, I'm handing this city over to the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. He'll take it. The attacking Chaldeans will break through and burn the city down, all those houses whose roofs were used as altars for offerings to Baal and the worship of who knows how many other gods provoked me. It isn't as if this were the first time they had provoked me. The people of Israel and Judah have been doing this for a long time, doing what I hate, making me angry by the way they live. God's Decree This city has made me angry from the day they built it, and now I've had my fill. I'm destroying it. I can't stand to look any longer at the wicked lives of the people of Israel and Judah, deliberately making me angry, the whole lot of them, kings and leaders and priests and preachers, in the country and in the city. They've turned their backs on me, won't even look me in the face, even though I took great pains to teach them how to live. They refuse to listen, refuse to be taught. Why, they even set up obscene god and goddess statues in the temple built in my honor, an outrageous desecration. And then they went out and built shrines to the god Baal in the valley of Hinnom, where they burned their children in sacrifice to the god Molech, I can hardly conceive of such evil, turning the whole country into one huge act of sin. But there is also this message from me, the God of Israel, to this city of which you have said, in killing and starvation and disease this city will be delivered up to the king of Babylon. Watch for this. I will collect them from all the countries to which I will have driven them in my anger and rage and indignation. Yes, I'll bring them all back to this place and let them live here in peace. They will be my people, I will be their God. I'll make them of one mind and heart, always honoring me, so that they can live good and whole lives, they and their children after them. What's more, I'll make a covenant with them that will last forever, a covenant to stick with them no matter what, and work for their good. I'll fill their hearts with a deep respect for me so they'll not even think of turning away from me. Oh how I'll rejoice in them! Oh how I'll delight in doing good things for them! Heart and soul, I'll plant them in this country and keep them here. Yes, this is God's message, I will certainly bring this huge catastrophe on this people, but I will also usher in a wonderful life of prosperity. I promise. Fields are going to be bought here again, yes, in this very country that you assume is going to end up desolate, gone to the dogs, unlivable, wrecked by the Babylonians. Yes, people will buy farms again, and legally, with deeds of purchase, sealed documents, proper witnesses, and right here in the territory of Benjamin, and in the area around Jerusalem, around the villages of Judah and the hill country, the Shephelah and the Negev. I will restore everything that was lost. God's Decree While Jeremiah was still locked up in jail, a second message from God was given to him. This is God's message, the God who made earth, made it livable and lasting, known everywhere as God, call to me and I will answer you. I'll tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. This is what God, the God of Israel, has to say about what's going on in this city, about the homes of both people and kings that have been demolished, about all the ravages of war and the killing by the Chaldeans, and about the streets littered with the dead bodies of those killed because of my raging anger about all that's happened because the evil actions in this city have turned my stomach in disgust. But now take another look. I'm going to give this city a thorough renovation, working a true healing inside and out. I'm going to show them life whole, life brimming with blessings. I'll restore everything that was lost to Judah and Jerusalem. 
I'll build everything back as good as new. I'll scrub them clean from the dirt they've done against me. I'll forgive everything they've done wrong, forgive all their rebellions. And Jerusalem will be a center of joy and praise and glory for all the countries on earth. They'll get reports on all the good I'm doing for her. They'll be in awe of the blessings I am pouring on her. Yes, God's message, you're going to look at this place, these empty and desolate towns of Judah and streets of Jerusalem, and say, a wasteland. Unlivable. Not even a dog could live here. But the time is coming when you're going to hear laughter and celebration, marriage festivities, people exclaiming, thank God of the angel armies. He's so good. His love never quits, as they bring thank offerings into God's temple. I'll restore everything that was lost in this land. I'll make everything as good as new. I, God, say so. God of the angel armies says, this coming desolation, unfit for even a stray dog, is once again going to become a pasture for shepherds who care for their flocks. You'll see flocks everywhere, in the mountains around the towns of the Shephelah and Negev, all over the territory of Benjamin, around Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, flocks under the care of shepherds who keep track of each sheep. God says so. Watch for this, the time is coming, God's decree, when I will keep the promise I made to the families of Israel and Judah. When that time comes, I will make a fresh and true shoot sprout from the David tree. He will run this country honestly and fairly. He will set things right. That's when Judah will be secure and Jerusalem live in safety. The motto for the city will be, God has set things right for us. God has made it clear that there will always be a descendant of David ruling the people of Israel and that there will always be Levitical priests on hand to offer burnt offerings, present grain offerings, and carry on the sacrificial worship in my honor. God's message to Jeremiah, God says, If my covenant with day and my covenant with night ever fell apart so that day and night became haphazard and you never knew which was coming and when, then and only then would my covenant with my servant David fall apart and his descendants no longer rule. The same goes for the Levitical priests who serve me. Just as you can't number the stars in the sky nor measure the sand on the seashore, neither will you be able to account for the descendants of David my servant and the Levites who serve me. God's message to Jeremiah, have you heard the saying that's making the rounds, the two families God chose, Israel and Judah, he disowned. And have you noticed that my people are treated with contempt, with rumors afoot that there's nothing to them anymore? Well, here's God's response, if my covenant with day and night wasn't in working order, if sky and earth weren't functioning the way I set them going, then, but only then, you might think I had disowned the descendants of Jacob and of my servant David, and that I wouldn't set up any of David's descendants over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But as it is, I will give them back everything they've lost. The last word is, I will have mercy on them. God's message to Jeremiah at the time King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon mounted an all-out attack on Jerusalem and all the towns around it with his armies and allies and everyone he could muster. I, God, the God of Israel, direct you to go and tell Zedekiah king of Judah, this is God's message. Listen to me. I am going to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he is going to burn it to the ground. And don't think you'll get away. You'll be captured and be his prisoner. You will have a personal confrontation with the king of Babylon and be taken off with him, captive, to Babylon. But listen, O Zedekiah king of Judah, to the rest of the message of God. You won't be killed. You'll die a peaceful death. 
They will honor you with funeral rites as they honored your ancestors, the kings who preceded you. They will properly mourn your death, weeping, Master, Master. This is a solemn promise. God's Decree The prophet Jeremiah gave this message to Zedekiah king of Judah in Jerusalem, gave it to him word for word. It was at the very time that the king of Babylon was mounting his all-out attack on Jerusalem and whatever cities in Judah that were still standing, only Lachish and Azekah, as it turned out, they were the only fortified cities left in Judah. God delivered a message to Jeremiah after King Zedekiah made a covenant with the people of Jerusalem to decree freedom to the slaves who were Hebrews, both men and women. The covenant stipulated that no one in Judah would own a fellow Jew as a slave. All the leaders and people who had signed the covenant set free the slaves, men and women alike. But a little while later, they reneged on the covenant, broke their promise and forced their former slaves to become slaves again. Then Jeremiah received this message from God, God, the God of Israel, says, I made a covenant with your ancestors when I delivered them out of their slavery in Egypt. At the time I made it clear, at the end of seven years, each of you must free any fellow Hebrew who has had to sell himself to you. After he has served six years, set him free. But your ancestors totally ignored me. And now, you, what have you done? First you turned back to the right way and did the right thing, decreeing freedom for your brothers and sisters, and you made it official in a solemn covenant in my temple. And then you turned right around and broke your word, making a mockery of both me and the covenant, and made them all slaves again, these men and women you just set free. You forced them back into slavery. So here is what I, God, have to say, you have not obeyed me and set your brothers and sisters free. Here is what I'm going to do, I'm going to set you free, God's decree, free to get killed in war or by disease or by starvation. I'll make you a spectacle of horror. People all over the world will take one look at you and shudder. Everyone who violated my covenant, who didn't do what was solemnly promised in the covenant ceremony when they split the young bull into two halves and walked between them, all those people that day who walked between the two halves of the bull, leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, palace officials, priests, and all the rest of the people, I'm handing the lot of them over to their enemies who are out to kill them. Their dead bodies will be carrying food for vultures and stray dogs. As for Zedekiah king of Judah and his palace staff, I'll also hand them over to their enemies, who are out to kill them. The army of the king of Babylon has pulled back for a time, but not for long, for I'm going to issue orders that will bring them back to this city. They'll attack and take it and burn it to the ground. The surrounding cities of Judah will fare no better. I'll turn them into ghost towns, unlivable and unlived in. God's Decree The message that Jeremiah received from God ten years earlier, during the time of Jehoiakim son of Josiah king of Israel. Go visit the Rechabite community. Invite them to meet with you in one of the rooms in God's temple and serve them wine. So I went and got Jazaniah son of Jeremiah, son of Habaziniah, along with all his brothers and sons, the whole community of the Rechabites as it turned out, and brought them to God's temple and to the meeting room of Hanan son of Idalia, a man of God. It was next to the meeting room of the temple officials and just over the apartment of Messiah son of Shalom, who was in charge of temple affairs. Then I set out chalices and pitchers of wine for the Rechabites and said, A toast. Drink up. But they wouldn't do it. We don't drink wine, they said. Our ancestor Jonadab son of Rechab commanded us, You are not to drink wine, you or your children, ever. 
Neither shall you build houses or settle down, planting fields and gardens and vineyards. Don't own property. Live in tents as nomads so that you will live well and prosper in a wandering life. And we've done it, done everything Jonadab son of Rechab commanded. We and our wives, our sons and daughters, drink no wine at all. We don't build houses. We don't have vineyards or fields or gardens. We live in tents as nomads. We've listened to our ancestor Jonadab and we've done everything he commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon invaded our land, we said, let's go to Jerusalem and get out of the path of the Chaldean and Aramean armies, find ourselves a safe place. That's why we're living in Jerusalem right now. Then Jeremiah received this message from God, God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, wants you to go tell the people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem that I say, why won't you learn your lesson and do what I tell you? God's Decree The commands of Jonadab son of Rechab to his sons have been carried out to the letter. He told them not to drink wine, and they haven't touched a drop to this very day. They honored and obeyed their ancestors' command. But look at you. I have gone to a lot of trouble to get your attention, and you've ignored me. I sent prophet after prophet to you, all of them my servants, to tell you from early morning to late at night to change your life, make a clean break with your evil past and do what is right, to not take up with every Tom, Dick, and Harry of a God that comes down the pike but settle down and be faithful in this country I gave your ancestors. And what do I get from you? Deaf ears. The descendants of Jonadab son of Rechab carried out to the letter what their ancestor commanded them, but this people ignores me. So here's what is going to happen. God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, I will bring calamity down on the heads of the people of Judah and Jerusalem, the very calamity I warned you was coming, because you turned a deaf ear when I spoke, turned your backs when I called. Then, turning to the Rechabite community, Jeremiah said, And this is what God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says to you, because you have done what Jonadab your ancestor told you, obeyed his commands and followed through on his instructions, receive this message from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, there will always be a descendant of Jonadab son of Rechab at my service. Always. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim son of Josiah king of Judah, Jeremiah received this message from God. Get a scroll and write down everything I've told you regarding Israel and Judah and all the other nations from the time I first started speaking to you in Josiah's reign right up to the present day. Maybe the community of Judah will finally get it, finally understand the catastrophe that I'm planning for them, turn back from their bad lives, and let me forgive their perversity and sin. So Jeremiah called in Baruch son of Neriah. Jeremiah dictated and Baruch wrote down on a scroll everything that God had said to him. Then Jeremiah told Baruch, I'm blacklisted. I can't go into God's temple, so you'll have to go in my place. Go into the temple and read everything you've written at my dictation. Wait for a day of fasting when everyone is there to hear you. And make sure that all the people who come from the Judean villages hear you. Maybe, just maybe, they'll start praying and God will hear their prayers. Maybe they'll turn back from their bad lives. This is no light matter. God has certainly let them know how angry he is. Baruch son of Neriah did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. In the temple of God he read the message of God from the scroll. It came about in December of the fifth year of Jehoiakim son of Josiah king of Judah that all the people of Jerusalem, along with all the people from the Judean villages, 
were there in Jerusalem to observe a fast to God. Baruch took the scroll to the temple and read out publicly the words of Jeremiah. He read from the meeting room of Jemariah son of Shaphan the secretary of state, which was in the upper court right next to the new gate of God's temple. Everyone could hear him. The moment Micaiah the son of Jemariah heard what was being read from the scroll, God's message, he went straight to the palace and to the chambers of the secretary of state where all the government officials were holding a meeting, Elishama the secretary, Deliah son of Shemaiah, Elnathan son of Achbor, Jemariah son of Shaphan, Zedekiah son of Hananiah, and all the other government officials. Micaiah reported everything he had heard Baruch read from the scroll as the officials listened. Immediately they dispatched Jehudi son of Nethaniah, son of Semeah, son of Cushi, to Baruch, ordering him, Take the scroll that you have read to the people and bring it here. So Baruch went and retrieved the scroll. The officials told him, Sit down. Read it to us, please. Baruch read it. When they had heard it all, they were upset. They talked it over. We've got to tell the king all this. They asked Baruch, tell us, how did you come to write all this? Was it at Jeremiah's dictation? Baruch said, that's right. Every word right from his own mouth. And I wrote it down, word for word with pen and ink. The government officials told Baruch, you need to get out of here. Go into hiding, you and Jeremiah. Don't let anyone know where you are. The officials went to the court of the palace to report to the king, having put the scroll for safekeeping in the office of Elishama the secretary of state. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll. He brought it from the office of Elishama the secretary. Jehudi then read it to the king and the officials who were in the king's service. It was December. The king was sitting in his winter quarters in front of a charcoal fire. After Jehudi would read three or four columns, the king would cut them off the scroll with his pocket knife and throw them in the fire. He continued in this way until the entire scroll had been burned up in the fire. Neither the king nor any of his officials showed the slightest twinge of conscience as they listened to the messages read. Elnathan, Deliah, and Jemariah tried to convince the king not to burn the scroll, but he brushed them off. He just plowed ahead and ordered Prince Jerahamiel, Sariah son of Osriel, and Shelemiah son of Abdeel to arrest Jeremiah the prophet and his secretary Baruch. But God had hidden them away. After the king had burned the scroll that Baruch had written at Jeremiah's dictation, Jeremiah received this message from God, get another blank scroll and do it all over again. Write out everything that was in that first scroll that Jehoiakim king of Judah burned up and send this personal message to Jehoiakim king of Judah, God says, you had the gall to burn this scroll and then the nerve to say, what kind of nonsense is this written here, that the king of Babylon will come and destroy this land and kill everything in it. Well, do you want to know what God says about Jehoiakim king of Judah? This, no descendant of his will ever rule from David's throne. His corpse will be thrown in the street and left unburied, exposed to the hot sun and the freezing night. I will punish him and his children and the officials in his government for their blatant sin. I'll let loose on them and everyone in Jerusalem the doomsday disaster of which I warned them but they spit at. So Jeremiah went and got another scroll and gave it to Baruch son of Neriah, his secretary. At Jeremiah's dictation he again wrote down everything that Jehoiakim king of Judah had burned in the fire. There were also generous additions, but of the same kind of thing. 
King Zedekiah son of Josiah, a puppet king set on the throne by Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon in the land of Judah, was now king in place of Jehoiakim son of Jehoiakim. But neither he nor his officials or the people themselves paid a bit of attention to the message God gave by Jeremiah the prophet. However, King Zedekiah sent Jehuchal son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah the priest, son of Messiah, to Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Pray for us, pray hard, to the Master, our God. Jeremiah was still moving about freely among the people in those days. This was before he had been put in jail. Pharaoh's army was marching up from Egypt. The Chaldeans fighting against Jerusalem heard that the Egyptians were coming and pulled back. Then Jeremiah the prophet received this message from God, I, the God of Israel, want you to give this message to the king of Judah, who has just sent you to me to find out what he should do. Tell him, get this, Pharaoh's army, which is on its way to help you, isn't going to stick it out. No sooner will they get here than they'll leave and go home to Egypt. And then the Babylonians will come back and resume their attack, capture this city and burn it to the ground. I, God, am telling you, don't kid yourselves, reassuring one another, the Babylonians will leave in a few days. I tell you, they aren't leaving. Why, even if you defeated the entire attacking Chaldean army and all that was left were a few wounded soldiers in their tents, the wounded would still do the job and burn this city to the ground. When the Chaldean army pulled back from Jerusalem, Jeremiah left Jerusalem to go over to the territory of Benjamin to take care of some personal business. When he got to the Benjamin gate, the officer on guard there, Erijah son of Shelemiah, son of Hananiah, grabbed Jeremiah the prophet, accusing him, you're deserting to the Chaldeans. That's a lie, protested Jeremiah. I wouldn't think of deserting to the Chaldeans. But Erijah wouldn't listen to him. He arrested him and took him to the police. The police were furious with Jeremiah. They beat him up and threw him into jail in the house of Jonathan the Secretary of State. They were using the house for a prison cell. So Jeremiah entered an underground cell in a cistern turned into a dungeon. He stayed there a long time. Later King Zedekiah had Jeremiah brought to him. The king questioned him privately, is there a message from God? There certainly is, said Jeremiah. You're going to be turned over to the king of Babylon. Jeremiah continued speaking to King Zedekiah, Can you tell me why you threw me into prison? What crime did I commit against you or your officials or this people? And tell me, whatever has become of your prophets who preached all those sermons saying that the king of Babylon would never attack you or this land? Listen to me, please, my master, my king. Please don't send me back to that dungeon in the house of Jonathan the secretary. I'll die there. So King Zedekiah ordered that Jeremiah be assigned to the courtyard of the palace guards. He was given a loaf of bread from Baker's Alley every day until all the bread in the city was gone. And that's where Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the palace guards. Shaphatiah son of Mutton, Gedaliah son of Pasher, Jehuchal son of Shelemiah, and Pasher son of Malkijah heard what Jeremiah was telling the people, namely, This is God's message, whoever stays in this town will die, will be killed or starve to death or get sick and die. But those who go over to the Babylonians will save their necks and live. And, God sure word, this city is destined to fall to the army of the king of Babylon. He's going to take it over. These officials told the king, please, kill this man. He's got to go. 
He's ruining the resolve of the soldiers who are still left in the city, as well as the people themselves, by spreading these words. This man isn't looking after the good of this people. He's trying to ruin us. King Zedekiah caved in, if you say so. Go ahead, handle it your way. You're too much for me. So they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Malkijah the king's son that was in the courtyard of the palace guard. They lowered him down with ropes. There wasn't any water in the cistern, only mud. Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebed Melech the Ethiopian, a court official assigned to the royal palace, heard that they had thrown Jeremiah into the cistern. While the king was holding court in the Benjamin gate, Ebed Melech went immediately from the palace to the king and said, My master, O king, these men are committing a great crime in what they're doing, throwing Jeremiah the prophet into the cistern and leaving him there to starve. He's as good as dead. There isn't a scrap of bread left in the city. So the king ordered Ebed Melech the Ethiopian, get three men and pull Jeremiah the prophet out of the cistern before he dies. Ebed Melech got three men and went to the palace wardrobe and got some scraps of old clothing, which they tied together and lowered down with ropes to Jeremiah in the cistern. Ebed Melech the Ethiopian called down to Jeremiah, put these scraps of old clothing under your armpits and around the ropes. Jeremiah did what he said. And so they pulled Jeremiah up out of the cistern by the ropes. But he was still confined in the courtyard of the palace guard. Later, King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and had him brought to the third entrance of the temple of God. The king said to Jeremiah, I'm going to ask you something. Don't hold anything back from me. Jeremiah said, If I told you the whole truth, you'd kill me. And no matter what I said, you wouldn't pay any attention anyway. Zedekiah swore to Jeremiah right there, but in secret, as sure as God lives, who gives us life, I won't kill you, nor will I turn you over to the men who are trying to kill you. So Jeremiah told Zedekiah, This is the message from God, God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, if you will turn yourself over to the generals of the king of Babylon, you will live, this city won't be burned down, and your family will live. But if you don't turn yourself over to the generals of the king of Babylon, this city will go into the hands of the Chaldeans and they'll burn it down. And don't for a minute think there's any escape for you. King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, but I'm afraid of the Judeans who have already deserted to the Chaldeans. If they get hold of me, they'll rough me up good. Jeremiah assured him, they won't get hold of you. Listen, please. Listen to God's voice. I'm telling you this for your own good so that you'll live. But if you refuse to turn yourself over, this is what God has shown me will happen. Picture this in your mind, all the women still left in the palace of the king of Judah, led out to the officers of the king of Babylon, and as they're led out they are saying, they lied to you and did you in. Those so-called friends of yours. And now you're stuck, about knee-deep in mud. And your friends, where are they now? They'll take all your wives and children and give them to the Chaldeans. And you, don't think you'll get out of this, the king of Babylon will seize you and then burn this city to the ground. Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, don't let anyone know of this conversation, if you know what's good for you. If the government officials get wind that I've been talking with you, they may come and say, tell us what went on between you and the king, what you said and what he said. Hold nothing back and we won't kill you. If this happens, tell them, I presented my case to the king so that he wouldn't send me back to the dungeon of Jonathan to die there. And sure enough, 
all the officials came to Jeremiah and asked him. He responded as the king had instructed. So they quit asking. No one had overheard the conversation. Jeremiah lived in the courtyard of the palace guards until the day that Jerusalem was captured. In the ninth year and tenth month of Zedekiah king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came with his entire army and laid siege to Jerusalem. In the eleventh year and fourth month, on the ninth day of Zedekiah's reign, they broke through into the city. All the officers of the king of Babylon came and set themselves up as a ruling council from the middle gate, Nergalsherezer of Simigar, Nebuchadnezzar the Rapsuris, Nergalsherezer the Rabmag, along with all the other officials of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah king of Judah and his remaining soldiers saw this, they ran for their lives. They slipped out at night on a path in the king's garden through the gate between two walls and headed for the wilderness, toward the Jordan Valley. The Babylonian army chased them and caught Zedekiah in the wilderness of Jericho. They seized him and took him to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon at Riblah in the country of Hamath. Nebuchadnezzar decided his fate. The king of Babylon killed all the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah right before his eyes and then killed all the nobles of Judah. After Zedekiah had seen the slaughter, Nebuchadnezzar blinded him, chained him up, and then took him off to Babylon. Meanwhile, the Babylonians burned down the royal palace, the temple, and all the homes of the people. They leveled the walls of Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, commander of the king's bodyguard, rounded up everyone left in the city, along with those who had surrendered to him, and herded them off to exile in Babylon. He didn't bother taking the few poor people who had nothing. He left them in the land of Judah to eke out a living as best they could in the vineyards and fields. Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon gave Nebuzaradan captain of the king's bodyguard special orders regarding Jeremiah, look out for him. Make sure nothing bad happens to him. Give him anything he wants. So Nebuzaradan, chief of the king's bodyguard, along with Nebuchadnezzar the Rapsuris, Nergalsherezer the Rabmag, and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon, sent for Jeremiah taking him from the courtyard of the royal guards and putting him under the care of Gedaliah son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, to be taken home. And so he was able to live with the people. Earlier, while Jeremiah was still in custody in the courtyard of the royal guards, God's message came to him, Go and speak with Ebed melech the Ethiopian. Tell him, God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, listen carefully, I will do exactly what I said I would do to this city, bad news, not good news. When it happens, you will be there to see it. But I'll deliver you on that doomsday. You won't be handed over to those men whom you have good reason to fear. Yes, I'll most certainly save you. You won't be killed. You'll walk out of there safe and sound because you trusted me. God's Decree God's message to Jeremiah after Nebuzaradan captain of the bodyguard set him free at Ramah. When Nebuzaradan came upon him, he was in chains, along with all the other captives from Jerusalem and Judah who were being herded off to exile in Babylon. The captain of the bodyguard singled out Jeremiah and said to him, Your God pronounced doom on this place. God came and did what he had warned he'd do because you all sinned against God and wouldn't do what he told you. So now you're all suffering the consequences. But today, Jeremiah, I'm setting you free, taking the chains off your hands. If you'd like to come to Babylon with me, come along. I'll take good care of you. But if you don't want to come to Babylon with me, that's just fine, too. Look, the whole land stretches out before you. Do what you like. 
Go and live wherever you wish. If you want to stay home, go back to Gedaliah son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan. The king of Babylon made him governor of the cities of Judah. Stay with him and your people. Or go wherever you'd like. It's up to you. The captain of the bodyguard gave him food for the journey and a parting gift, and sent him off. Jeremiah went to Gedaliah son of Ahikam at Mizpah and made his home with him and the people who were left behind in the land. When the army leaders and their men, who had been hiding out in the fields, heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah son of Ahikam as governor of the land, putting him in charge of the men, women, and children of the poorest of the poor who hadn't been taken off to exile in Babylon, they came to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Ishmael son of Nethaniah, Johanan and Jonathan the sons of Korea, Sariah son of Tanhumeth, the sons of Ephi the Netophathite, and Jazaniah son of the Machathite, accompanied by their men. Gedaliah son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, promised them and their men, You have nothing to fear from the Chaldean officials. Stay here on the land. Be subject to the king of Babylon. You'll get along just fine. My job is to stay here in Mizpah and be your advocate before the Chaldeans when they show up. Your job is to take care of the land, make wine, harvest the summer fruits, press olive oil. Store it all in pottery jugs and settle into the towns that you have taken over. The Judeans who had escaped to Moab, Ammon, Edom, and other countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a few survivors in Judah and made Gedaliah son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, governor over them. They all started coming back to Judah from all the places where they'd been scattered. They came to Judah and to Gedaliah at Mizpah and went to work gathering in a huge supply of wine and summer fruits. One day Johanan son of Korea and all the officers of the army who had been hiding out in the backcountry came to Gedaliah at Mizpah and told him, You know, don't you, that Baalus king of Ammon has sent Ishmael son of Nethaniah to kill you? But Gedaliah son of Ahikam didn't believe them. Then Johanan son of Korea took Gedaliah aside privately in Mizpah, Let me go and kill Ishmael son of Nethaniah. No one needs to know about it. Why should we let him kill you and plunge the land into anarchy? Why let everyone you've taken care of be scattered and what's left of Judah destroyed? But Gedaliah son of Ahikam told Johanan son of Korea, Don't do it. I forbid it. You're spreading a false rumor about Ishmael. But in the seventh month, Ishmael son of Nethaniah, son of Elishama, came. He had royal blood in his veins and had been one of the king's high-ranking officers. He paid a visit to Gedaliah son of Ahikam at Mizpah with ten of his men. As they were eating together, Ishmael and his ten men jumped to their feet and knocked Gedaliah down and killed him, killed the man the king of Babylon had appointed governor of the land. Ishmael also killed all the Judeans who were with Gedaliah in Mizpah, as well as the Chaldean soldiers who were stationed there. On the second day after the murder of Gedaliah, no one yet knew of it, men arrived from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria, eighty of them, with their beards shaved, their clothing ripped, and gashes on their bodies. They were pilgrims carrying grain offerings and incense on their way to worship at the temple in Jerusalem. Ishmael son of Nethaniah went out from Mizpah to welcome them, weeping ostentatiously. When he greeted them he invited them in, Come and meet Gedaliah son of Ahikam. But as soon as they were inside the city, Ishmael son of Nethaniah and his henchmen slaughtered the pilgrims and dumped the bodies in a cistern. Ten of the men talked their way out of the massacre. They bargained with Ishmael, don't kill us. We have a hidden store of wheat, barley, 
olive oil, and honey out in the fields. So he held back and didn't kill them with their fellow pilgrims. Ishmael's reason for dumping the bodies into a cistern was to cover up the earlier murder of Gedalia. The cistern had been built by King Asa as a defense against Basha king of Israel. This was the cistern that Ishmael son of Nethaniah filled with the slaughtered men. Ishmael then took everyone else in Mizpah, including the king's daughters entrusted to the care of Gedalia son of Ahikam by Nebuzaradan the captain of the bodyguard, as prisoners. Rounding up the prisoners, Ishmael son of Nethaniah proceeded to take them over into the country of Ammon. Johanan son of Korea and all the army officers with him heard about the atrocities committed by Ishmael son of Nethaniah. They set off at once after Ishmael's son of Nethaniah. They found him at the large pool at Gibeon. When all the prisoners from Mizpah who had been taken by Ishmael saw Johanan son of Korea and the army officers with him, they couldn't believe their eyes. They were so happy. They all rallied around Johanan son of Korea and headed back home. But Ishmael son of Nethaniah got away, escaping from Johanan with eight men into the land of Ammon. Then Johanan son of Korea and the army officers with him gathered together what was left of the people whom Ishmael son of Nethaniah had taken prisoner from Mizpah after the murder of Gedalia son of Ahikam, men, women, children, eunuchs, and brought them back from Gibeon. They set out at once for Egypt to get away from the Chaldeans, stopping on the way at Jerath Kimmim near Bethlehem. They were afraid of what the Chaldeans might do in retaliation of Ishmael's son of Nethaniah's murder of Gedalia son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had appointed as governor of the country. All the army officers, led by Johanan son of Korea and Jezaniah son of Hashaya, accompanied by all the people, small and great, came to Jeremiah the prophet and said, We have a request. Please listen. Pray to your God for us, what's left of us. You can see for yourself how few we are. Pray that your God will tell us the way we should go and what we should do. Jeremiah the prophet said, I hear your request and I will pray to your God as you have asked. Whatever God says, I'll pass on to you. I'll tell you everything, holding nothing back. They said to Jeremiah, Let God be our witness, a true and faithful witness against us, if we don't do everything that your God directs you to tell us. Whether we like it or not, we'll do it. We'll obey whatever our God tells us. Yes, count on us. We'll do it. Ten days later God's message came to Jeremiah. He called together Johanan son of Korea and all the army officers with him, including all the people, regardless of how much clout they had. He then spoke, This is the message from God, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your prayer. He says, if you are ready to stick it out in this land, I will build you up and not drag you down, I will plant you and not pull you up like a weed. I feel deep compassion on account of the doom I have visited on you. You don't have to fear the king of Babylon. Your fears are for nothing. I'm on your side, ready to save and deliver you from anything he might do. I'll pour mercy on you. What's more, he will show you mercy. He'll let you come back to your very own land. But do not say, we're not staying around this place, refusing to obey the command of your God and saying instead, no. We're off to Egypt, where things are peaceful, no wars, no attacking armies, plenty of food. We're going to live there. If what's left of Judah is headed down that road, then listen to God's message. This is what God of the angel armies says, If you have determined to go to Egypt and make that your home, 
then the very wars you fear will catch up with you in Egypt and the starvation you dread will track you down in Egypt. You'll die there. Every last one of you who is determined to go to Egypt and make it your home will either be killed, starve, or get sick and die. No survivors, not one. No one will escape the doom that I'll bring upon you. This is the message from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, in the same way that I swept the citizens of Jerusalem away with my anger and wrath, I'll do the same thing all over again in Egypt. You'll end up being cursed, reviled, ridiculed, and mocked. And you'll never see your homeland again. God has plainly told you, you leftovers from Judah, don't go to Egypt. Could anything be plainer? I warn you this day that you are living out a fantasy. You're making a fatal mistake. Didn't you just now send me to your God, saying, pray for us to our God? Tell us everything that God says and we'll do it all. Well, now I've told you, told you everything he said, and you haven't obeyed a word of it, not a single word of what your God sent me to tell you. So now let me tell you what will happen next, you'll be killed, you'll starve to death, you'll get sick and die in the wonderful country where you've determined to go and live. When Jeremiah finished telling all the people the whole message that their God had sent him to give them, all these words, Azariah son of Hashiah and Johanan son of Korea, backed by all the self-important men, said to Jeremiah, Liar! Our God never sent you with this message telling us not to go to Egypt and live there. Baruch son of Neriah is behind this. He has turned you against us. He's playing into the hands of the Babylonians so we'll either end up being killed or taken off to exile in Babylon. Johanan son of Korea and the army officers, and the people along with them, wouldn't listen to God's message that they stay in the land of Judah and live there. Johanan son of Korea and the army officers gathered up everyone who was left from Judah, who had come back after being scattered all over the place, the men, women, and children, the king's daughters, all the people that Nebuzaradan captain of the bodyguard had left in the care of Gedaliah son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and last but not least, Jeremiah the prophet and Baruch son of Neriah. They entered the land of Egypt in total disobedience of God's message and arrived at the city of Topanis. While in Topanis, God's word came to Jeremiah, pick up some large stones and cover them with mortar in the vicinity of the pavement that leads up to the building set aside for Pharaoh's use in Topanis. Make sure some of the men of Judah are watching. Then address them, this is what God of the angel armies says, be on the lookout. I'm sending for and bringing Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, mind you, and he'll set up his throne on these very stones that I've had buried here and he'll spread out his canopy over them. He'll come and absolutely smash Egypt, sending each to his assigned fate, death, exile, slaughter. He'll burn down the temples of Egypt's gods. He'll either burn up the gods or haul them off as booty. Like a shepherd who picks lice from his robes, he'll pick Egypt clean. And then he'll walk away without a hand being laid on him. He'll shatter the sacred obelisks at Egypt's house of the sun and make a huge bonfire of the temples of Egypt's gods. The message that Jeremiah received for all the Judeans who lived in the land of Egypt, who had their homes in Migdal, Topanz, Naf, and the land of Pathros, this is what God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, You saw with your own eyes the terrible doom that I brought down on Jerusalem and the Judean cities. Look at what's left, ghost towns of rubble and smoking ruins, and all because they took up with evil ways, making me angry by going off to offer sacrifices and worship the latest in gods, no gods that neither they nor you nor your ancestors knew the first thing about. 
Morning after morning and long into the night I kept after you, sending you all those prophets, my servants, begging you, please, please, don't do this, don't fool around in this loathsome gutter of gods that I hate with a passion. But do you think anyone paid the least bit of attention or repented of evil or quit offering sacrifices to the no-gods? Not one. So I let loose with my anger, a firestorm of wrath in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, and left them in ruins and wasted. And they're still in ruins and wasted. This is the message of God, God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, so why are you ruining your lives by amputating yourselves, man, woman, child, and baby, from the life of Judah, leaving yourselves isolated, unconnected? And why do you deliberately make me angry by what you do, offering sacrifices to these no-gods in the land of Egypt where you've come to live? You'll only destroy yourselves and make yourselves an example used in curses and an object of ridicule among all the nations of the earth. Have you so soon forgotten the evil lives of your ancestors, the evil lives of the kings of Judah and their wives, to say nothing of your own evil lives, you and your wives, the evil you flaunted in the land of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? And to this day, there's not a trace of remorse, not a sign of reverence, nobody caring about living by what I tell them or following my instructions that I've set out so plainly before you and your parents. So this is what God of the angel armies decrees. Watch out! I've decided to bring doom on you and get rid of everyone connected with Judah. I'm going to take what's left of Judah, those who have decided to go to Egypt and live there, and finish them off. In Egypt they will either be killed or starved to death. The same fate will fall upon both the obscure and the important. Regardless of their status, they will either be killed or starve. You'll end up cursed, reviled, ridiculed, and mocked. I'll give those who are in Egypt the same medicine I gave those in Jerusalem, massacre, starvation, and disease. None of those who manage to get out of Judah alive and get away to Egypt are going to make it back to the Judah for which they're so homesick. None will make it back, except maybe a few fugitives. The men who knew that their wives had been burning sacrifices to the no-gods, joined by a large crowd of women, along with virtually everyone living in Pathros of Egypt, answered Jeremiah, we're having nothing to do with what you tell us is God's message. We're going to go right on offering sacrifices to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, keeping up the traditions set by our ancestors, our kings and government leaders in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem in the good old days. We had a good life then, lots of food, rising standard of living, and no bad luck. But the moment we quit sacrificing to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out offerings to her, everything fell apart. We've had nothing but massacres and starvation ever since. And then the women chimed in, yes. Absolutely. We're going to keep at it, offering sacrifices to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out offerings to her. Aren't our husbands behind us? They like it that we make goddess cakes and pour out our offerings to her. Then Jeremiah spoke up, confronting the men and the women, all the people who had answered so insolently. He said, The sacrifices that you and your parents, your kings, your government officials, and the common people of the land offered up in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, don't you think God noticed? He noticed, all right and he got fed up. Finally, he couldn't take your evil behavior and your disgusting acts any longer. Your land became a wasteland, a death valley, a horror story, a ghost town. And it continues to be just that. This doom has come upon you because you kept offering all those sacrifices, and you sinned against God. 
you refused to listen to him, wouldn't live the way he directed, ignored the covenant conditions. Jeremiah kept going, but now zeroed in on the women, listen, all you who are from Judah and living in Egypt, please, listen to God's word. God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, you women. You said it and then you did it. You said, we're going to keep the vows we made to sacrifice to the Queen of Heaven and pour out offerings to her, and nobody's going to stop us. Well, go ahead. Keep your vows. Do it up big. But also listen to what God has to say about it, all you who are from Judah but live in Egypt, I swear by my great name, backed by everything I am, this is God speaking, that never again shall my name be used in vows, such as, as sure as the Master, God, lives, by anyone in the whole country of Egypt. I've targeted each one of you for doom. The good is gone for good. All the Judeans in Egypt will die off by massacre or starvation until they're wiped out. The few who get out of Egypt alive and back to Judah will be very few, hardly worth counting. Then that ragtag bunch that left Judah to live in Egypt will know who had the last word. And this will be the evidence, I will bring punishment right here, and by this you'll know that the decrees of doom against you are the real thing. Watch for this sign of doom, I will give Pharaoh Hophra king of Egypt over to his enemies, those who are out to kill him, exactly as I gave Zedekiah king of Judah to his enemy Nebuchadnezzar, who was after him. This is what Jeremiah told Baruch one day in the fourth year of Jehoiakim's reign as he was taking dictation from the prophet. These are the words of God, the God of Israel, to you, Baruch. You say, these are bad times for me. It's one thing after another. God is piling on the pain. I'm worn out and there's no end in sight. But God says, look around. What I've built I'm about to wreck, and what I've planted I'm about to rip up. And I'm doing it everywhere, all over the whole earth. So forget about making any big plans for yourself. Things are going to get worse before they get better. But don't worry. I'll keep you alive through the whole business. God's messages through the prophet Jeremiah regarding the godless nations. The message to Egypt and the army of Pharaoh Necho king of Egypt at the time it was defeated by Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon while camped at Karchemish on the Euphrates river in the fourth year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah, present arms. March to the front. Harness the horses. Up in the saddles. Battle formation. Helmets on. Spears sharpened, armor in place. But what's this I see? They're scared out of their wits. They break ranks and run for cover. Their soldiers panic. They run this way and that. Stampeding blindly. It's total chaos total confusion, danger everywhere. God's decree. The swiftest runners won't get away. The strongest soldiers won't escape. In the north country, along the river Euphrates. They'll stagger, stumble, and fall. Who is this like the Nile in flood? Like its streams torrential? Why, it's Egypt like the Nile in flood like its streams torrential, saying, I'll take over the world. I'll wipe out cities and peoples. Run, horses. Roll, chariots. Advance, soldiers. From Cush and put with your shields. Soldiers from Lud. Experts with bow and arrow. But it's not your day. It's the Masters, me, God of the Angel Armies. The day when I have it out with my enemies. 
The day when sword puts an end to my enemies. When sword exacts vengeance. I, the master, God of the angel armies. Will pile them on an altar, a huge sacrifice. In the great north country. Along the mighty Euphrates. O, oh, virgin daughter Egypt. Climb into the mountains of Gilead, get healing balm. You will vainly collect medicines. For nothing will be able to cure what ails you. The whole world will hear your anguished cries. Your wails fill the earth. As soldier falls against soldier. And they all go down in a heap. The message that God gave to the prophet Jeremiah when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon was on his way to attack Egypt. Tell Egypt, alert Migdal. Post warnings in Naf and Tapans. Wake up. Be prepared. War's coming. Why will your bull god Apis run off? Because God will drive him off. Your ragtag army will fall to pieces. The word is passing through the ranks. Let's get out of here while we still can. Let's head for home and save our skins. When they get home they'll nickname Pharaoh. Big talk bad luck. As sure as I am the living God. The king's decree, God of the angel armies is his name. A conqueror is coming, like Tabor, singular among mountains. Like Carmel, jutting up from the sea. So pack your bags for exile. You coddled daughters of Egypt. For Memphis will soon be nothing. A vacant lot grown over with weeds. Too bad, Egypt, a beautiful sleek heifer. Attacked by a horsefly from the north. All her hired soldiers are stationed to defend her. Like well-fed calves they are. But when their lives are on the line, they'll run off. Cowards every one. When the going gets tough. They'll take the easy way out. Egypt will slither and hiss like a snake. As the enemy army comes in force. They will rush in, swinging axes. Like lumberjacks cutting down trees. They'll level the country, God's decree, nothing. And no one standing for as far as you can see. The invaders will be a swarm of locusts. Innumerable, past counting. Daughter Egypt will be ravished. Raped by vandals from the north. God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, says, Watch out when I visit doom on the God Ammon of Thebes, Egypt, and its gods and kings, Pharaoh and those who trust in him. I'll turn them over to those who are out to kill them, to Nebuchadnezzar and his military. Egypt will be set back a thousand years. Eventually people will live there again. God's decree. But you, Dear Jacob my servant, you have nothing to fear. Israel, there's no need to worry. Look up. I'll save you from that far country. I'll get your children out of the land of exile. Things are going to be normal again for Jacob. Safe and secure, smooth sailing. Yes, dear Jacob my servant, you have nothing to fear. Depend on it, I'm on your side. I'll finish off all the godless nations. Among which I've scattered you. But I won't finish you off. I have more work left to do on you. I'll punish you, but fairly. No, I'm not finished with you yet. God's message to the prophet Jeremiah regarding the Philistines just before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. This is what God says, look out. Water will rise in the north country. Swelling like a river in flood. The torrent will flood the land. Washing away city and citizen. 
men and women will scream in terror. Wails from every door and window. As the thunder from the hooves of the horses will be heard. The clatter of chariots, the banging of wheels. Fathers, paralyzed by fear. Won't even grab up their babies. Because it will be doomsday for Philistines, one and all. No hope of help for Tyre and Sidon. God will finish off the Philistines. What's left of those from the island of Crete? Gaza will be shaved bald as an egg. Ashkelon struck dumb as a post. You're on your last legs. How long will you keep flailing? Oh, sword of God. How long will you keep this up? Return to your scabbard. Haven't you had enough? Can't you call it quits? But how can it quit? When I, God, command the action. I've ordered it to cut down. Ashkelon and the seacoast. The message on Moab from God of the angel armies, the God of Israel, doomed to Nebo. Leveled to the ground. Kiriathame demeaned and defeated. The mighty fortress reduced to a molehill. Moab's glory, dust and ashes. Conspirators plot Heshbon's doom. Come, let's wipe Moab off the map. The city of madmen will be struck mute. As killing follows killing. Listen. A cry out of Horonaim. Disaster, doom and more doom. Moab will be shattered. Her cries will be heard clear down in Zor. Up the ascent of Lohith. Climbers weep. And down the descent from Horonaim. Cries of loss and devastation. Oh, run for your lives. Get out while you can. Survive by your wits in the wild. You trusted in thick walls and big money, yes. But it won't help you now. Your big god Chemosh will be hauled off. His priests and managers with him. A wrecker will wreck every city. Not a city will survive. The valley fields will be ruined. The plateau pastures destroyed, just as I told you. Cover the land of Moab with salt. Make sure nothing ever grows here again. Her towns will all be ghost towns. Nobody will ever live here again. Sloppy work in God's name is cursed and cursed all half-hearted use of the sword. Moab has always taken it easy. Lazy as a dog in the sun. Never had to work for a living. Never faced any trouble. Never had to grow up. Never once worked up a sweat. But those days are a thing of the past. I'll put him to work at hard labor. That will wake him up to the world of hard knocks. That will smash his illusions. Moab will be as ashamed of God Chemosh. As Israel was ashamed of her Bethel calf gods. The calf gods she thought were so great. For how long do you think you'll be saying, we're tough? We can beat anyone anywhere. The destruction of Moab has already begun. Her choice young soldiers are lying dead right now. The king's decree. His full name, God of the Angel Armies. Yes. Moab's doom is on countdown. Disaster targeted and launched. Weep for Moab, friends and neighbors. All who know how famous he's been. Lament, his mighty scepter snapped in two like a toothpick. That magnificent royal staff. Come down from your high horse, pampered beauty of Dibon. Sit in dog dung. The destroyer of Moab will come against you. He'll wreck your safe, secure houses. 
Stand on the roadside. Hampered women of error. Interview the refugees who are running away. Ask them, what's happened? And why? Moab will be an embarrassing memory, nothing left of the place. Wail and weep your eyes out. Tell the bad news along the Arnon River. Tell the world that Moab is no more. My judgment will come to the plateau cities, on Hulon, Jaza, and Mepheth, on Dibon, Nebo, and Beth Diblothame, on Kiriathame, Beth Gamel, and Beth Mian, on Kerioth, Basra, and all the cities of Moab, far and near. Moab's link to power is severed. Moab's arm is broken. God's decree. Turn Moab into a drunken lush, drunk on the wine of my wrath, a dung-faced drunk, filling the country with vomit, Moab a falling down drunk, a joke in bad taste. Wasn't it you, Moab, who made crude jokes over Israel? And when they were caught in bad company, didn't you cluck and gossip and snicker? Leave town. Leave. Look for a home in the cliffs. You who grew up in Moab. Try living like a dove. Who nests high in the river gorge. We've all heard of Moab's pride. That legendary pride. The strutting, bullying, puffed up pride. The insufferable arrogance. I know, God's decree, his rooster crowing pride. The inflated claims, the sheer nothingness of Moab. But I will weep for Moab. Yes, I will mourn for the people of Moab. I will even mourn for the people of Kear Heres. I'll weep for the grapevines of Sibma. And join Jazer in her weeping. Grapevines that once reached the Dead Sea. With tendrils as far as Jazer. Your summer fruit and your bursting grapes. Will be looted by brutal plunderers. Lush Moab stripped. Of song and laughter. And yes, I'll shut down the wine presses. Stop all the shouts and hurrahs of harvest. Heshbon and Alili will cry out, and the people in Jahaz will hear the cries. They will hear them all the way from Zor to Horonaim and Eglath Shelashia. Even the waters of Nimrim will be dried up. I will put a stop in Moab, God's decree, to all hiking to the high places to offer burnt sacrifices to the gods. My heart moans for Moab, for the men of Kear Heres, like soft flute sounds carried by the wind. They've lost it all. They've got nothing. Everywhere you look are signs of mourning. Heads shaved, beards cut. Hands scratched and bleeding. Clothes ripped and torn. In every house in Moab there will be loud lamentation, on every street in Moab, loud lamentation. As with a pottery jug that no one wants, I'll smash Moab to bits. God's Decree Moab ruined. Moab shamed and ashamed to be seen. Moab a cruel joke. The stark horror of Moab. God's verdict on Moab. Indeed, look. An eagle is about to swoop down. And spread its wings over Moab. The towns will be captured. The fortress is taken. Brave warriors will double up in pain, helpless to fight. Like a woman giving birth to a baby. There'll be nothing left of Moab, nothing at all. Because of his defiant arrogance against me. Terror and pit and trap. Are what you have facing you, Moab. God's decree. A man running in terror. Will fall into a trap. A man climbing out of a pit. Will be caught in a trap. This is my agenda for Moab. 
On Doomsday God's Decree On the outskirts of Heshbon Refugees will pull up short, worn out. Fire will flame high from Heshbon. A firestorm raging from the capital of Sion's kingdom. It will burn off Moab's eyebrows. Will scorch the skull of the braggarts. That's all for you, Moab. You worshippers of Chemosh will be finished off. Your sons will be trucked off to prison camps. Your daughters will be herded into exile. But yet there's a day that's coming. When I'll put things right in Moab. For now, that's the judgment on Moab. God's message on the Ammonites doesn't Israel have any children. No one to step into her inheritance. So why is the god Milcom taking over Gad's land? His followers moving into its towns. But not for long. The time's coming. God's decree. When I'll fill the ears of Rabbah, Ammon's big city. With battle cries. She'll end up a pile of rubble. All her towns burn to the ground. Then Israel will kick out the invaders. I, God, say so, and it will be so. Whale Heshbon, Ai is in ruins. Villages of Rabbah, wring your hands. Dress in mourning, weep buckets of tears. Go into hysterics, run around in circles. Your god Milcom will be hauled off to exile. And all his priests and managers write with him. Why do you brag of your once famous strength? You're a broken down has been, a cast off. Who fondles his trophies and dreams of glory days. And vainly thinks, no one can lay a hand on me. Well, think again. I'll face you with terror from all sides. Word of the Master, God of the Angel Armies. You'll be stampeded headlong. With no one to round up the runaways. Still, the time will come. When I will make things right with Ammon. God's Decree. The message of God of the Angel Armies on Edom is there nobody wise left in famous Taman? No one with a sense of reality. Has their wisdom gone wormy and rotten? Run for your lives. Get out while you can. Find a good place to hide. You who live in Dedan. I'm bringing doom to Esau. It's time to settle accounts. When harvesters work your fields. Don't they leave gleanings? When burglars break into your house, don't they take only what they want? But I'll strip Esau clean. I'll search out every nook and cranny. I'll destroy everything connected with him. Children and relatives and neighbors. There'll be no one left who will be able to say, I'll take care of your orphans. Your widows can depend on me. Indeed. God says, I tell you, if there are people who have to drink the cup of God's wrath even though they don't deserve it, why would you think you'd get off? You won't get off. You'll drink it. Oh yes, you'll drink every drop. And as for Basra, your capital, I swear by all that I am, God's decree, that that city will end up a pile of charred ruins, a stinking garbage dump, an obscenity, and all her daughter cities with her. I've just heard the latest from God. He sent an envoy to the nations. Muster your troops and attack Edom. Present arms. Go to war. Ah, Edom, I'm dropping you to last place among nations. The bottom of the heap, kicked around. You think you're so great. Strutting across the stage of history. Living high in the impregnable rocks. Acting like king of the mountain. 
You think you're above it all, don't you? Like an eagle in its airy. Well, you're headed for a fall. I'll bring you crashing to the ground. God's decree. Edom will end up trash. Stinking, despicable trash. A wonder of the world in reverse. She'll join Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors in the sewers of history. God says so, no one will live there, no mortal soul move in there. Watch this, like a lion coming up. From the thick jungle of the Jordan. Looking for prey in the mountain pastures. I will come upon Edom and pounce. I'll take my pick of the flock, and who's to stop me? The shepherds of Edom are helpless before me. So, listen to this plan that God has worked out against Edom, the blueprint of what he's prepared for those who live in Taman. Believe it or not, the young, the vulnerable. Mere lambs and kids, will be dragged off. Believe it or not, the flock. In shock, helpless to help, will watch it happen. The very earth will shudder because of their cries. Cries of anguish heard at the distant Red Sea. Look! An eagle soars, swoops down. Spreads its wings over Basra. Brave warriors will double up in pain, helpless to fight. Like a woman giving birth to a baby. The message on Damascus, Hamath and Arpad will be in shock. When they hear the bad news. Their hearts will melt in fear. As they pace back and forth in worry. The blood will drain from the face of Damascus. As she turns to flee. Hysterical, she'll fall to pieces. Disabled, like a woman in childbirth. And now how lonely, bereft, abandoned. The once famous city, the once happy city. Her bright young men dead in the streets. Her brave warriors silent as death. On that day, decree of God of the angel armies. I'll start a fire at the wall of Damascus. That will burn down all of Ben-Hadad's forts. The message on Kedar and the sheikdoms of Hazer who were attacked by Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. This is God's message on your feet. Attack Kedar. Plunder the Bedouin nomads from the east. Grab their blankets and pots and pans. Steal their camels. Traumatize them, shouting, terror. Death. Doom. Danger everywhere. Oh, run for your lives. You nomads from Hazer. God's decree. Find a safe place to hide. Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. Has plans to wipe you out. To go after you with a vengeance. After them, he says. Go after these relaxed nomads. Who live free and easy in the desert. Who live in the open with no doors to lock. Who live off by themselves. Their camels are there for the taking. Their herds and flocks, easy picking. I'll scatter them to the four winds. These defenseless nomads on the fringes of the desert. I'll bring terror from every direction. They won't know what hit them. God's decree. Jackals will take over the camps of Hazer. Camps abandoned to wind and sand. No one will live there. No mortal soul move in there. God's message to the prophet Jeremiah on Elam at the outset of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah. This is what God of the angel armies says, watch this. I'll break Elam's bow. Her weapon of choice, across my knee. Then I'll let four winds loose on Elam. Winds from the four corners of earth. 
I'll blow them away in all directions. Landing homeless Elamites in every country on earth. They'll live in constant fear and terror. Among enemies who want to kill them. I'll bring doom on them. My anger fueled doom. I'll set murderous hounds on their heels. Until there's nothing left of them. And then I'll set up my throne in Elam. Having thrown out the king and his henchmen. But the time will come when I make. Everything right for Elam again. God's Decree. The message of God through the prophet Jeremiah on Babylon, land of the Chaldeans, get the word out to the nations. Preach it. Go public with this, broadcast it far and wide. Babylon taken, God Bell hanging his head in shame. God Marduk exposed as a fraud. All her god idols shuffling in shame. All her play gods exposed as cheap frauds. For a nation will come out of the north to attack her. Reduce her cities to rubble. Empty of life, no animals, no people. Not a sound, not a movement, not a breath. In those days, at that time, God's decree. The people of Israel will come. And the people of Judah with them. Walking and weeping, they'll seek me, their God. They'll ask directions to Zion. And set their faces toward Zion. They'll come and hold tight to God. Bound in a covenant eternal they'll never forget. My people were lost sheep. Their shepherds led them astray. They abandoned them in the mountains. Where they wandered aimless through the hills. They lost track of home. Couldn't remember where they came from. Everyone who met them took advantage of them. Their enemies had no qualms. Fair game, they said. They walked out on God. They abandoned the true pasture, the hope of their parents. But now, get out of Babylon as fast as you can. Be rid of that Babylonian country. On your way. Good sheepdogs lead, but don't you be led. Lead the way home. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm rallying a host of nations against Babylon. They'll come out of the north. Attack and take her. Oh, they know how to fight, these armies. They never come home empty-handed. Babylon is ripe for picking. All her plunderers will fill their bellies. God's decree. You Babylonians had a good time while it lasted, didn't you? You lived it up, exploiting and using my people. Frisky calves romping in lush pastures. Wild stallions out having a good time. Well, your mother would hardly be proud of you. The woman who bore you wouldn't be pleased. Look at what's come of you. A nothing nation. Rubble and garbage and weeds. Emptied of life by my holy anger. A desert of death and emptiness. Travelers who pass by Babylon will gasp, appalled. Shaking their heads at such a come down. Gang up on Babylon. Pin her down. Throw everything you have against her. Hold nothing back. Knock her flat. She sinned, oh, how she sinned, against me. Shout battle cries from every direction. All the fight has gone out of her. Her defenses have been flattened. Her walls smashed. Operation God's Vengeance. Pile on the vengeance. Do to her as she has done. Give her a good dose of her own medicine. Destroy her farms and farmers. Ravage her fields, empty her barns. 
and you captives, while the destruction rages. Get out while the getting's good. Get out fast and run for home. Israel is a scattered flock. Hunted down by lions. The king of Assyria started the carnage. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Has completed the job. Gnawing the bones clean. And now this is what God of the angel armies. The God of Israel, has to say. Just watch. I'm bringing doom on the king of Babylon and his land. The same doom I brought on the king of Assyria. But Israel I'll bring home to good pastures. He'll graze on the hills of Carmel and Bashan. On the slopes of Ephraim and Gilead. He will eat to his heart's content. In those days and at that time, God's decree. They'll look high and low for a sign of Israel's guilt, nothing. Search nook and cranny for a trace of Judah's sin, nothing. These people that I've saved will start out with a clean slate. Attack Marathim, land of rebels. Go after Pecod, country of doom. Hunt them down. Make a clean sweep. God's decree. These are my orders. Do what I tell you. The thunderclap of battle. Shakes the foundations. The hammer has been hammered. Smashed and splintered. Babylon pummeled. Beyond recognition. I set out a trap and you were caught in it. O oh Babylon, you never knew what hit you. Caught and held in the steel grip of that trap. That's what you get for taking on God. I, God, opened my arsenal. I brought out my weapons of wrath. The Master, God of the angel armies. Has a job to do in Babylon. Come at her from all sides. Break into her granaries. Shovel her into piles and burn her up. Leave nothing. Leave no one. Kill all her young Turks. Send them to their doom. Doom to them. Yes, doomsday. The clock has finally run out on them. And here's a surprise. Runaways and escapees from Babylon. Show up in Zion reporting the news of God's vengeance. Taking vengeance for my own temple. Call in the troops against Babylon. Anyone who can shoot straight. Tighten the noose. Leave no loopholes. Give her back as good as she gave. A dose of her own medicine. Her brazen insolence is an outrage. Against God, the Holy of Israel. And now she pays, her young strewn dead in the streets. Her soldiers dead, silent forever. God's decree. Do you get it, Mr. Pride? I'm your enemy. Decree of the Master, God of the angel armies. Time's run out on you. That's right, it's doomsday. Mr. Pride will fall flat on his face. No one will offer him a hand. I'll set his towns on fire. The fire will spread wild through the country. And here's more from God of the angel armies, the people of Israel are beaten down. The people of Judah along with them. Their oppressors have them in a grip of steel. They won't let go. But the rescuer is strong. God of the angel armies. Yes, I will take their side. I'll come to their rescue. I'll suit their land. But rough up the people of Babylon. It's all out war in Babylon, God's decree. Total war against people, leaders, and the wise. War to the death on her boasting pretenders, fools one and all. 
War to the death on her soldiers, cowards to a man. War to the death on her hired killers, gutless wonders. War to the death on her banks, looted. War to the death on her water supply, drained dry. A land of make-believe gods gone crazy, hobgoblins. The place will be haunted with jackals and scorpions. Night owls and vampire bats. No one will ever live there again. The land will reek with the stench of death. It will join Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors. The cities I did away with. God's decree. No one will live there again. No one will again draw a breath in that land, ever. And now, watch this. People pouring. Out of the north, hordes of people. A mob of kings stirred up. From far off places. Flourishing deadly weapons. Barbarians they are, cruel and pitiless. Roaring and relentless, like ocean breakers. They come riding fierce stallions. In battle formation, ready to fight. You, daughter Babylon. Babylon's king hears them coming. He goes white as a ghost, limp as a dishrag. Terror-stricken, he doubles up in pain, helpless to fight. Like a woman giving birth to a baby. And now watch this, like a lion coming up. From the thick jungle of the Jordan. Looking for prey in the mountain pastures. I'll take over and pounce. I'll take my pick of the flock, and who's to stop me? All the so-called shepherds are helpless before me. So, listen to this plan that God has worked out against Babylon, the blueprint of what he's prepared for dealing with Chaldea, believe it or not, the young. The vulnerable, mere lambs and kids, will be dragged off. Believe it or not, the flock. In shock, helpless to help, watches it happen. When the shout goes up, Babylon's down. The very earth will shudder at the sound. The news will be heard all over the world. There's more. God says more, watch this. I'm whipping up. A death-dealing hurricane against Babylon, Hurricane Persia against all who live in that perverse land. I'm sending a cleanup crew into Babylon. They'll clean the place out from top to bottom. When they get through there'll be nothing left of her. Worth taking or talking about. They won't miss a thing. A total and final doomsday. Fighters will fight with everything they've got. It's no holds barred. They will spare nothing and no one. It's final and wholesale destruction, the end. Babylon littered with the wounded. Streets piled with corpses. It turns out that Israel and Judah are not widowed after all. As their God, God of the angel armies, I am still alive and well. Committed to them even though they filled their land with sin. Against Israel's most holy God. Get out of Babylon as fast as you can. Run for your lives. Save your necks. Don't linger and lose your lives to my vengeance on her. As I pay her back for her sins. Babylon was a fancy gold chalice. Held in my hand filled with the wine of my anger, to make the whole world drunk. The nations drank the wine, and they've all gone crazy. Babylon herself will stagger and crash, senseless in a drunken stupor, tragic. Get anointing balm for her wound. Maybe she can be cured. We did our best, but she can't be helped. Babylon is past fixing. 
Give her up to her fate. Go home. The judgment on her will be vast. A skyscraper memorial of vengeance. God has set everything right for us. Come. Let's tell the good news. Back home in Zion. Let's tell what our God did to set things right. Sharpen the arrows. Fill the quivers. God has stirred up the kings of the Medes. Infecting them with war fever, destroy Babylon. God's on the warpath. He's out to avenge his temple. Give the signal to attack Babylon's walls. Station guards around the clock. Bring in reinforcements. Set men in ambush. God will do what he planned. What he said he'd do to the people of Babylon. You have more water than you need. You have more money than you need. But your life is over. Your lifeline cut. God of the angel armies has solemnly sworn. I'll fill this place with soldiers. They'll swarm through here like locusts. Chanting victory songs over you. By his power he made earth. His wisdom gave shape to the world. He crafted the cosmos. He thunders and rain pours down. He sends the clouds soaring. He embellishes the storm with lightnings. Launches the wind from his warehouse. Stick God worshippers look mighty foolish. God makers embarrassed by their handmade gods. Their gods are frauds, dead sticks. Deadwood gods, tasteless jokes. They're nothing but stale smoke. When the smoke clears, they're gone. But the portion of Jacob is the real thing. He put the whole universe together. With special attention to Israel. His name. God of the angel armies. God says, you, Babylon, are my hammer. My weapon of war. I'll use you to smash godless nations. Use you to knock kingdoms to bits. I'll use you to smash horse and rider. Use you to smash chariot and driver. I'll use you to smash man and woman. Use you to smash the old man and the boy. I'll use you to smash the young man and young woman. Use you to smash shepherd and sheep. I'll use you to smash farmer and yoked oxen. Use you to smash governors and senators. Judeans, you'll see it with your own eyes. I'll pay Babylon and all the Chaldeans back for all the evil they did in Zion. God's decree. I'm your enemy, Babylon, Mount Destroyer. You ravager of the whole earth. I'll reach out, I'll take you in my hand. And I'll crush you till there's no mountain left. I'll turn you into a gravel pit. No more cornerstones cut from you. No more foundation stones quarried from you. Nothing left of you but gravel. God's decree. Raise the signal in the land. Blow the shofar trumpet for the nations. Consecrate the nations for holy work against her. Call kingdoms into service against her. Enlist Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a field marshal against her. And round up horses, locust hordes of horses. Consecrate the nations for holy work against her. The king of the Medes, his leaders and people. The very land trembles in terror, writhes in pain. Terrorized by my plans against Babylon. Plans to turn the country of Babylon. Into a lifeless moonscape, a wasteland. Babylon soldiers have quit fighting. They hide out in ruins and caves. Cowards who've given up without a fight. 
exposed as cowering crybabies. Babylon's houses are going up in flames. The city gates torn off their hinges. Runner after runner comes racing in. Each on the heels of the last. Bringing reports to the king of Babylon. That his city is a lost cause. The fords of the rivers are all taken. Wildfire rages through the swamp grass. Soldiers desert left and right. I, God of the angel armies, said it would happen. Daughter Babylon is a threshing floor. At threshing time. Soon, oh very soon, her harvest will come. And then the chaff will fly. Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. Chewed up my people and spit out the bones. He wiped his dish clean, pushed back his chair. And belched, a huge gluttonous belch. Lady Zion says. The brutality done to me be done to Babylon. And Jerusalem says. The blood spilled from me be charged to the Chaldeans. Then I, God, step in and say. I'm on your side, taking up your cause. I'm your avenger. You'll get your revenge. I'll dry up her rivers, plug up her springs. Babylon will be a pile of rubble. Scavenged by stray dogs and cats. A dumping ground for garbage. A godforsaken ghost town. The Babylonians will be like lions and their cubs. Ravenous, roaring for food. I'll fix them a meal, all right, a banquet, in fact. They'll drink themselves falling down drunk. Dead drunk, they'll sleep, and sleep, and sleep. And they'll never wake up. God's decree. I'll haul these lions off to the slaughterhouse. Like the lambs, rams, and goats. Never to be heard of again. Babylon is finished. The pride of the whole earth is flat on her face. What a come down for Babylon. To end up inglorious in the sewer. Babylon drowned in chaos. Battered by waves of enemy soldiers. Her towns stink with decay and rot. The land empty and bare and sterile. No one lives in these towns anymore. Travelers give them a wide berth. I'll bring doom on the glutton god Bel in Babylon. I'll make him vomit up all he gulped down. No more visitors stream into this place. Admiring and gawking at the wonders of Babylon. The wonders of Babylon are no more. Run for your lives, my dear people. Run, and don't look back. Get out of this place while you can. This place torched by God's raging anger. Don't lose hope. Don't ever give up. When the rumors pour in hot and heavy. One year it's this, the next year it's that. Rumors of violence, rumors of war. Trust me, the time is coming. When I'll put the no-gods of Babylon in their place. I'll show up the whole country as a sickening fraud. With dead bodies strewn all over the place. Heaven and earth, angels and people. We'll throw a victory party over Babylon. When the avenging armies from the north. Descend on her. God's decree. Babylon must fall. Compensation for the war dead in Israel. Babylonians will be killed. Because of all that Babylonian killing. But you exiles who have escaped a Babylonian death. Get out. And fast. Remember God in your long and distant exile. Keep Jerusalem alive in your memory. How we've been humiliated, taunted and abused. 
kicked around for so long that we hardly know who we are. And we hardly know what to think. Our old sanctuary, God's house, desecrated by strangers. I know, but trust me, the time is coming. God's decree. When I will bring doom on her no god idols. And all over this land her wounded will groan. Even if Babylon climbed a ladder to the moon. And pulled up the ladder so that no one could get to her. That wouldn't stop me. I'd make sure my avengers would reach her. God's decree. But now listen. Do you hear it? A cry out of Babylon. An unearthly wail out of Chaldea. God is taking his wrecking bar to Babylon. We'll be hearing the last of her noise. Death throws like the crashing of waves. Death rattles like the roar of cataracts. The avenging destroyer is about to enter Babylon. Her soldiers are taken, her weapons are trashed. Indeed, God is a God who evens things out. All end up with their just deserts. I'll get them drunk, the whole lot of them. Princes, sages, governors, soldiers. Dead drunk, they'll sleep, and sleep and sleep. And never wake up. The king's decree. His name. God of the angel armies. God of the angel armies speaks. The city walls of Babylon, those massive walls, will be flattened. And those city gates, huge gates, will be set on fire. The harder you work at this empty life, the less you are. Nothing comes of ambition like this. But ashes. Jeremiah the prophet gave a job to Sariah son of Neriah, son of Messiah, when Sariah went with Zedekiah king of Judah to Babylon. It was in the fourth year of Zedekiah's reign. Sariah was in charge of travel arrangements. Jeremiah had written down in a little booklet all the bad things that would come down on Babylon. He told Sariah, when you get to Babylon, read this out in public. Read, you, O God, said that you would destroy this place so that nothing could live here, neither human nor animal, a wasteland to top all wastelands, an eternal nothing. When you've finished reading the page, tie a stone to it, throw it into the river Euphrates, and watch it sink. Then say, that's how Babylon will sink to the bottom and stay there after the disaster I'm going to bring upon her. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he started out as king. He was king in Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah. Her hometown was Libna. As far as God was concerned, Zedekiah was just one more evil king, a carbon copy of Jehoiakim. The source of all this doom to Jerusalem and Judah was God's anger. God turned his back on them as an act of judgment, Zedekiah revolted against the king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar set out for Jerusalem with a full army. He set up camp and sealed off the city by building siege mounds around it. He arrived on the ninth year and tenth month of Zedekiah's reign. The city was under siege for nineteen months, until the eleventh year of Zedekiah. By the fourth month of Zedekiah's eleventh year, on the ninth day of the month, the famine was so bad that there wasn't so much as a crumb of bread for anyone. Then the Babylonians broke through the city walls. Under cover of the night darkness, the entire Judean army fled through an opening in the wall, it was the gate between the two walls above the king's garden. They slipped through the lines of the Babylonians who surrounded the city and headed for the Jordan into the Araba Valley, but the Babylonians were in full pursuit. They caught up with them in the plains of Jericho. 
But by then Zedekiah's army had deserted and was scattered. The Babylonians captured Zedekiah and marched him off to the king of Babylon at Riblah in Hamath, who tried and sentenced him on the spot. The king of Babylon then killed Zedekiah's sons right before his eyes. The summary murder of his sons was the last thing Zedekiah saw, for they then blinded him. The king of Babylon followed that up by killing all the officials of Judah. Securely handcuffed, Zedekiah was hauled off to Babylon. The king of Babylon threw him in prison, where he stayed until the day he died. In the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon on the seventh day of the fifth month, Nebuzaradan, the king of Babylon's chief deputy, arrived in Jerusalem. He burned the temple of God to the ground, went on to the royal palace, and then finished off the city. He burned the whole place down. He put the Babylonian troops he had with him to work knocking down the city walls. Finally, he rounded up everyone left in the city, including those who had earlier deserted to the king of Babylon, and took them off into exile. He left a few poor dirt farmers behind to tend the vineyards and what was left of the fields. The Babylonians broke up the bronze pillars, the bronze washstands, and the huge bronze basin, the sea, that were in the temple of God, and hauled the bronze off to Babylon. They also took the various bronze-crafted liturgical accessories, as well as the gold and silver censers and sprinkling bowls, used in the services of temple worship. The king's deputy didn't miss a thing. He took every scrap of precious metal he could find. The amount of bronze they got from the two pillars, the sea, the twelve bronze bulls that supported the sea, and the ten washstands that Solomon had made for the temple of God was enormous. They couldn't weigh it all. Each pillar stood 27 feet high with a circumference of 18 feet. The pillars were hollow, the bronze a little less than an inch thick. Each pillar was topped with an ornate capital of bronze pomegranates and filigree, which added another seven and a half feet to its height. There were 96 pomegranates evenly spaced, in all, a hundred pomegranates worked into the filigree. The king's deputy took a number of special prisoners, Sariah the chief priest, Zephaniah the associate priest, three wardens, the chief remaining army officer, seven of the king's counselors who happened to be in the city, the chief recruiting officer for the army, and sixty men of standing from among the people who were still there. Nebuzaradan the king's deputy marched them all off to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And there at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, the king of Babylon killed the lot of them in cold blood, Judah went into exile, orphaned from her land. Three thousand and twenty-three men of Judah were taken into exile by Nebuchadnezzar in the seventh year of his reign. 832 from Jerusalem were taken in the eighteenth year of his reign. 745 men from Judah were taken off by Nebuzaradan, the king's chief deputy, in Nebuchadnezzar's twenty-third year, the total number of exiles was 4,600. When Jehoiakim king of Judah had been in exile for thirty-seven years, evil Merodach became king in Babylon and let Jehoiakim out of prison. This release took place on the twenty-fifth day of the twelfth month. The king treated him most courteously and gave him preferential treatment beyond anything experienced by the political prisoners held in Babylon. Jehoiakim took off his prison garb and from then on ate his meals in company with the king. The king provided everything he needed to live comfortably for the rest of his life.